Uh, Are you ready? And just watch that, right? Between 18 and 6, that's where we're good. Don't, why do you, why do you wait to have these meetings when we're on air? You know how unprofessional that is? What it do, baby? That's copyrighted now, too. You can't <laughs> you even say that. that. Yeah, yeah. I think that, right? Or no, you saw that. You probably no, saw it live. Saw it. I'm back. What it do, baby? No, I'm talking. Kawhi um, copyrighted that for uh, oh, clothing line. Yeah, oh, what it do, fine. baby? What it do, baby? Clothing line. I thought you were talking about what's his name? What's that asshole? Uh, They're all assholes. No, no, no. The Farty, Mc, Farty McFart. No, no, no. The NFL dude, the the white dude that everybody hates. It's like everyone. Old dude, wrinkly face, blonde hair. Yeah, you're describing like. Oh, it's the tip of my fucking tongue. You're not talking about Rex Ryan. No, not right. No, he's fat. <laughs> the skinny one. He's an asshole. What's what it do, uh, baby? On the same. Panel? No. Oh yeah, Rex Ryan's not wrinkly, and he picked he picked Baltimore. Good on him. Everyone else picked Patriots. You fools! Again, this is our sports podcast. Yeah, we always do this. Little guys in chairs. What's it? Little chairs. What it do, baby? He. I am back. What it do, baby? That's what you want. Bayless. To... Yeah, skip. Fucking asshole. That's his name. It was worse when it was him versus Stephen A. Those nice. just two insufferable. Nice they one. they figured out no. you need one insufferable and one. Who's it now? Shannon. Shannon Sharp. Yeah, Sharp. Yeah, brings them down. I like it. Yeah, and, <laughs> brings brings it, yeah. and then Stephen A's got Bass Kellerman. Brings them down. Right. Very very knowledgeable men, but to be screaming at each Although, other for for like three Kellerman, hours Kellerman's, in the morning. Kellerman's the guy who said uh, Mayfield was a real deal too. That's why it's, <laughs> that's why it's hilarious because the guys that bring them down always are like they have a missed shot, and then you'll have Stephen A be like, "You remember this? You remember this?" With his cowboy hat on. <laughs> Back at it again, like we never left, doing sports, coke and dank, dank in sports. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dank. Hey, coke. What do you call ants that don't speak? Mutants. <laughs> 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 I was trying to put X ants on. I was like, X ants? I know what we're talking about. That was a good one. That was a good one. That's a top fiver, baby. Yes. You get a top fiver. You get the Skip Bayless Award. <laughs> we get a for, top fiver at for joke intro. Too, we get a top fiver. Joke intro. Back to single mic, so we're not coming up in the world anymore. We're going back to humble, <laughs> humble beginnings. Temporarily. Yeah, we're, we're telling you. Anybody. They might not even know. No, but it's fine. We got to give them some insider's edge because we're 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 actually cheek to cheek right now. We're on a we're on a Mac. Yeah, just cheek to cheek. We're using Apple products. Lady in red. What? She's not dancing with me. Is that cheek the song? To cheek. cheek. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Get your Nobody a- else. And if you're talking eighties, you have to be talking about Even though I don't think they started in the eighties, but I love their eighties. This episode's probably gonna be a big one. This episode is brought to you by Back Welded. Shout out Antimicrobial. Shout out to Back Welded. We have one holler at Back Welded. We can use some uh sponsorships. No, but this this is this is a sit sit in, uh, sit down, gear up. We call, we call this narc analysis, but this is gonna be this is we're geeked out. Fucking... No, this is a this appreciation podcast because we're definitely in love with this new fucking Hickman. Let's just start saying Hickman, Hickman, Hickman now, because because uh, he's the man of the hour. The dude built a universe. Yeah, and then and then some. This is the new fifty two of X Men. If you don't know yet, we're doing House of X and Power Powers of, of X. Ten. It's Powers of Ten. Powers of X. <laughs> That's the only way I could say Hawks and Pox. Hawks and Pox. We're talking about Hawks and Pox. Yeah, you could have done a Harry Poxer uh, yeah. joke, but you chose not to. Um, the Alan Thickman. <laughs> Alan Hickman. Jonathan Hickman. Well, uh, wow, <laughs> you're good with names. Well, I, li- I like... I was thinking, thinking Alan Moore, right? No, I was thinking Alan Rickman. Oh, Alan Rickman. Who I enjoy, R.I.P. Um, <laughs> but... Where do we begin on this? The, again, this is a, a writer who decided, you know what? 
X Men's done with the way we've done it so far, and uh, we need to start again. And what an overtaking that would be in itself. Yes. But after reading twelve issues of his new Vision, good lord. Well, I'm a, I'm a big Hickman fan, so when I saw that he was doing this as like a reboot for it's the a new fifty two of the yeah of it's the a new fifty two. I was jacked up because he's he's written an amazing uh, Fantastic Four run, which I didn't finish, but as far as I got, it was amazing. He re- he wrote an Avengers and New Avengers run, which was amazing. Right. It went into Infinity and then led into the the Secret Wars. Mm-hmm. Crazy! It was like a two year lot. This the, he is the he does not just Marvel stuff too. He's done he does East of West for Image, um, Manhattan projects as well. He is the king of the long game. So I saw this and I was like, "This is long fucking cool." They're just giving him here's all the X Men, reboot it, make it something, make it sense, make it make it cohesive and um, what's the word where they all give them continuity? Yeah, and that's what he did. He had to go through. Ages of continuity. And, it's it's and been like sixty years it. of X Men. Yeah, hasn't it? and he tried to, and he had to fix it, and he f- more or less fucking pulled it off. And I don't, I don't. You you don't have to say fix it because with comics, there's never really not fix it, but make sense of it. Yeah, bring it all together. With with that in itself is a whole undertaking. But to have vision to know where it's going, and How much planning this must taken. Yeah, and like based on what we've read, he must see where it ends, or at least where. Oh, it yeah, fractures. no, he's the king of long game. This is gonna um, go two years at least. And I mean, as much as we'll love uh, Hickman and talk uh, in full praise, because I don't think we're going to talk any much, anything about artwork, no offense to the artists on it, because it was great, and there's great cell of work, and there's great paneling and all this stuff, but this is strictly about story and progression and characters. Um, he's no Bendis when it comes to X-Men. <laughs> 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 Oh fucking Bendis! Um, but let's let's get into it. How do, where do you want to begin? I actually read a bit of his Uncanny X Men. It's not bad. Bendis is Uncanny X Men. It's not bad. He just it's does just, they, he just I, weird yeah, things with yeah, weird I people I at really weird like times. I like him better yes. when when it doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll we'll get to Bendis if yeah. we want to get to Bendis. Right now we're on the Hickman's run. Good lord, I want to read all of this, but shut up. Are you gonna read that? I'm going to. Um, so this is Professor X message to the world. Um, this happens at the end of this 12 arc series, but it's so, it's so pertinent to what we're going to be talking about and kind of the whole change of ideal and ideologies of a lot of characters, especially Professor X, who would probably be called the first X-Men, if anyone, um, that it's so important that you kind of know where he's coming from. Humans of planet Earth, I am the mutant Charles Xavier, and I bring you a message of hope. In these coming days, you will learn several far-reaching pharmaceutical breakthroughs that have been discovered by mutant scientists. These drugs extend human life, heal disease of the mind, and will prevent or cure most common diseases. Influenza, Alzheimer's, ALS, many cancers, gone overnight. These drugs will make life on the planet better. Remarkably so, all this we have made for you. In the past, this would have been a gift, something freely given to me, to you, because I believed it would create a harmony between our two peoples. That was my dream. Harmony. But you have taught me a harsh (laughs) lesson. That dream was a lie. You see, all I ever wanted was peace between humans and mutants. All you ever wanted to do, all you ever wanted was to love you and for you to love us. We wanted to save you, and we did many times. But in return, all you did was stand by while evil men killed our children. Over 16 million of them. So there will be no gift. For you have not earned it. We will, however, let you pay for it. In return, for two things. We will provide you uh, with the means to have a better life. One without pain or suffering and full of hope. And it will cost you so little. First, you must accept the island of Krakoa as a nation state of all mutants on this planet. We will happily go through the same process as any newly formed nation with the UN, but there is an expectation that our sovereign sovereignty will be recognized. Second, all mutants by birth can claim Krakoan citizenship, and with this, with that citizenship, we expect a period of amnesty, so that those who have been singled out as criminals, or punished and imprisoned by humans, can overcome man's bias against mutants. From this day forward, mutants will be judged by mutant law. Not man's. These are our simple demands, and they are non-negotiable. In return, for making our lives better, we will do the same for you. And if you find yourself asking, who are these mutants to think that they can dictate to our 
who can dictate terms to us. We are the future. An evolutionary inevitability. The Earth's true inheritors. You close your eyes last night believing the world would be yours forever. That was your dream. And like mine, it was a lie. Here's the new truth. While you slept, the world changed. God damn, Professor X. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. yeah. And that's just where his mindset is at. That he's no longer playing. He's no longer the peacemaker. Yes. He's no longer This isn't the this isn't the X that you the Charles you're used to. He's not even rolling up in a wheelchair. No, no, he's walking around. In a skin tight suit. <laughs> uh, uh, we get, maybe we talk about suits later, but he, he could choose something that's a little less um, revealing. Yeah, well, it's funny. When I saw the first, when I saw the, uh, like when new... I saw the promo images, I thought he looked like Maker, which is the, for those who don't know, uh, the evil Reed Richards, like from a different time, Timeline? and he walks around with a big fucking machine on his head. That was so, so, some comments were saying in that a too, skin yeah. tight. I was like, is that fuck? Was, that can't be. When I saw the promo images, right? Right. So picture um, a Fantastic Four outfit, um, which is all skin, black. skin, yeah. skin tight too, all black, and he's got a giant uh, cerebro on his head. Yeah, it's like a, it's a big. Colander, essentially. It's, it's yep. kind of like um, Mysterio's fishbowl, but like you can Almost, see his mouth. but it only goes down. Yeah, it doesn't cover his mouth. It's but, a great Halloween costume if you have kids that are super, super in to like, the specific, specific I hope you things. do. <laughs> um, no, yeah, the Makers is more of a cone. It goes like this, but still, it's... it's uh, And that's, that's little to like no importance to what we're talking about with this whole run. Um, that's the last thing that he says in one of the final two comics yeah um but it's so prevalent to the attitudes of everyone aligned in this new type of future and to be fair they cover all that that he just said they cover that in the first issue of house of x anyways right so and to certain extents they break down specific parts of that um speech in different issues yeah yeah, and you revisit a lot of the panel. Well, we're gonna do it, but well, yeah, let's get it. We'll summarize what happened with the, the no, twelve issues. No, we're, we're just gonna tell you everything we fucking love. This is gonna turn into a lot of theories and a lot of what we like yeah, and I'm, don't I'm, like. We're gonna as, try as we're trying to. Explain we're gonna try not to bounce around too much, but so it's again, it's hard I'll to summarize. Call it, yeah, we'll it's hard su- to call it arc analysis. We'll call this new fifty two. <laughs> <laughs> it's new twenty five. This is yeah. This is gonna be a big. It's just. It's going to be fun. We're, to- we're talks and hawks and pox. Before we even like get deep, 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 I fucking enjoy this read. Uh, I oh, know- it's fucking really yeah, good. I've I know been- you went week to week. I went week to week when it first came out, yeah. I binged it on two days, and good lord. And I could have binged it one it, yeah. day if I didn't want to sleep. But and I was, was messaging so you, I was like, I was like so read this. Good, yes. You gotta read this. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll wait. get there. I'll I was get like, there. no, no, read this. I was like, fuck. I'd send him screenshots like different panels. <laughs> yeah, and they were great. Yeah. I was like, read this. Once you get into it, oh man. But it was a long wait. It was 12 issues. It was every week, but it was 12 issues long. So you're 12 weeks is a long time. And just to put the building blocks down of what this universe now looks like. It's not even like this yeah. is just an event yeah, just and it's over. This, this is just, just the like, beginning. Hey, man, here's where everyone looks like and how everyone's chilling out. But uh, let's get the story started now. And yeah. Like, now the actual series has begun. Speaking of which, the, it opens with mutants hatching in front of Xavier. We're talking about House of X. House of X number one. Yeah. The house that Xavier built. Yeah. And it's a bunch of house. It's a bunch of eggs hatching, and there's like people coming out of them. Right. And Xavier's like, "Come to me, my X Men." And it's like really creepy and yeah. fucking weird. <laughs> like, could have been a different genre. Could have been a horror movie. Very. Could have been like a another alternate reality. Yeah, where, it's it's where a little he's like a cult leader. Yeah, that's a constant throughout this whole book. Is that the X Men here and the mutants here are they're unsettling. They're not quite how you remember them. Xavier's a little bit. Xavier's quite different, actually, but Cyclops, for example, is a little different. Wolverine's a little different. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Uh, Wolverine's kind of a little softer. A little bit softer, yeah. And Cyclops is a little harder. Yeah. Which is amazing. Yeah, he's very militant in this. Um, but to their credit, nobody as- appears the same because based on all the information you're given, everything that they've learned through all the ways that they've learned it, they couldn't be the same characters that we've grown up with and loved. So no. the fact that there's a slight tint on everything you remembered works in everything's favorite because you you can't look at them as the same x-men no and you should no because they're not these, these are and they don't want you, they literally don't want you to fuck i don't like i'm just not like <laughs> jump in I, now i'm like i don't even want to do issue this you guys want to get into what's going on but it's do it. break break your own mold master mold oh mega uh, mold that that too um that was a great uh those two issues 
I think were my which one favorite issues. Aspect were they, four. Aspect four was incredible. If, I don't I don't remember the numbers. It's where Cyclops assembles the, the X Men team. Yeah, Aspect four. Yes, yeah, where yes, so yes. they go and just they do the they do the thing. So are we talking about the house that Xavier built? Or yeah, we're know? talking about that because okay. Charles. They, we just in the speech there. He, he's offering drugs to other uh, worldly governing powers. <laughs> drugs. Yeah, drugs are cool. Okay. So in the speech that Dank said, it covers all that already. He's offering drugs in return for sovereignty. And he just, you know, recognizes us as a nation. And you can have this sweet fucking... Yeah, life-altering, life, life altering, right? life-changing, life-extending drugs. While at the same time, uh, Magneto, Emma Frost, the Cuckoos are showing, like, ambassadors around the island, the different places of Krakoa. If you don't know what Krakoa is, it's a living island. And he's been in other issues before, but this is the first time they've actually... Inhabited, yeah, yeah, used him as someone to live. Yeah. And he, um, there's flowers in Krakoa. If you listen to this, you, you already know this, but I'm going to break it down anyways for those that haven't read it. And maybe you don't know that. Maybe, so maybe you don't. Okay, fair enough. There's these flowers that they can, that open gateways from Krakoa to anywhere else that another flower, is. another flower is, or wherever he deems it necessary. Right. But only mutants can pass through it. Correct. It's a, it's a gateway for any mutant, solid for any non-mutant mm-hmm. and it just leads them back to this island paradise where like he was like charles was saying in that speech all mutants are welcome and right. you have well, citizenship as long as you're funny thing that he, he, you say about the speech there are certain things that i pulled out of that specific speech we'll go into more details when we get yep. to yep. the final one but the fact that he said uh born mutant oh yeah because yeah. there's that's a few okay. mutants out there that were not born mutants no. so that's a that's another Again, we'll have theories like a motherfucker, but that for me, that was something that was like, hey, there's a few people out there um, that are mutants but weren't born mutants. So I don't know if that's a specific, specific direct, um, like call out to them. Case in point, um, th- in the first issue, um, Magneto sent out Sabretooth, uh, Toad, and Mystique to go uh, on a recon mission to get a, a hard drive from Damage Control, I think it was, to find out kind of security optics. Something, something, something or other. Um, the mission was successful. However, Sabretooth being Sabretooth um, fucked shit up and fucked up a lot of humans. He killed some guards, too. Yes, he yeah. did. And Fantastic Four come to put a kibosh to that. Because to their um, radar, it's a whole bunch of, I guess, villains or bad guys doing bad things. They're going to come and save the day. So they capture him while Mystique and Toad make their way... To one of the gates. Back to Krakoa. And... Cyclops makes his yeah, first this is, appearance it's here. It's weird, yeah. Cyclops comes it's back such a through. cool dynamic because off the bat, he already he's already like, "Hey, man, what are you uh, doing? <laughs> yeah, that, that's our dude, right?" So like, as Saber Two's already frozen in like a Miss Invisible like square, like a mime, he's like, "I'm in a, I'm, I'm in a box." Uh, he's like, "You're gonna release that," and you get this nice little face off between Reed and Cyclops. Yeah, which for me harkens back to a little Civil War. Although they're re- they're not really puffing up their chest, but there's something there that's like this could be more. No, because Psych is like. During the psych, Scott's kind of just like, he's not really blatantly challenging him. He's no. more like, what are you doing here? Like, he's kind of like a pesky, like, hey, what you doing with my guy? He's one of ours. And Reed's like, well, you know, he's being a Boy Scout. Like, oh, you know, it's kind of cool seeing Cyclops not be the Boy Scout. That's yeah, what I enjoy. Because a different side, si- yeah. A different Cyclops would be like, I'm not leaving without him. Yeah. The Cyclops like, like mm, all right. Instead, because <laughs> he doesn't leave without Sabretooth, he lets uh, Fantastic Four put him into custody. Yeah. He just leaves a little remark to um, Miss Invisible, who says, uh, who's commenting back and forth with Scott, and basically to the terms of, like, Scott, are you sure what Charles is doing is, like, right? Like, is all this worth it? And Scott's like, I wholeheartedly believe in this, yeah. and I'm yeah. not turning back. And the little nugget that I loved was, um, where did I write it? Uh... When he's ready, tell Franklin that he has a spot on Krakoa because, for him. Yeah. Because he is a born mutant. Yeah. And an Omega mutant of that, he's too. Gonna, he's going to be a big... Plot device. I think he's going to be a big piece moving forward. Big cause... plot device. And you could see a whole schism happening between Fantastic Four and X-Men oh, yeah. off of Franklin. Oh, yeah. So, and that's that's like the first four pages off that. They, Hickman already gave me this to like chew on. And I was like, yes! Cyclops is in it, and he, he's, like, he's just going to play it cool. But he threw out this little dagger to be like, hey, man, I don't give a fuck about Fantastic Four, but that fifth... He's he's more my team than your team. Yeah, yeah, he's one of us, so he's welcome here. Whenever you uh, you jokers, 
let them loose, right? Right. Uh, so we flash back to what uh, Magneto's doing. Um, this oh, with, is... the, with the ambassadors, yeah. He's, he's he's taking them around, showing them obviously because they're they're trying to get. Uh, they're trying to be friendly. No, they're trying to be diplomatic. Well, they're, they're they're, they want be, the yeah. UN status. What they yeah. want to be uh, considered a country and a uh, sovereignty nation, so they have to go through all the officials. But you get the error of Magnus to be like, you can look around with me, but fuck your shit. We're the new gods here, right? Like, finally, we're in a place of prominence. Yeah. So if you're not going to recognize it, we're going to take it. So we'll play nice right now, but we're done playing nice, which I fucking love. That's like one of the best. This is a great Magneto. <laughs> but this this is the dream yeah. realized Magneto. This is the only he's one so, that I feel like so he, happy. Yeah. But he's the, he's been telling Charles this for how many decades of like you can't trust them. We have to unite or fucking take them down. And Charles, I'm like, no, there's a better way. There's a better way. There's a better way. Well, you know, not in not in book one. Um, I love it because he has an unwavering belief that mutants are above the evolutionary chain. And finally, stepping into prominence, they take no shit. But more importantly, they believe that they are the chosen one, and that's a universal, like belief that each mutant now believes that they are. Oh yeah, they, they have a purpose. Yeah, they a are, higher purpose. They are yeah. better, right? Before they were trying to put them on the same level of humans, and humans just kept fucking them over. After a certain point, you have to be like, is it them or is it me? Because if I keep letting them fuck me over, then I'm no better. And now they're not taking shit for anybody. So fucking amazing. Um, also in this issue, while you, they're they're doing the thing. There's a team of Orcus find the forge and Mega Mold in this. Yeah, there's there's a forge and there's forge, which I feel. Yeah, was... not not the character forge, the f- but the that's forge. that's yeah. that's stupid writing for me. Because <laughs> you know who forge is, yeah. but now you're creating the forge. Yeah. So there's there's no other name you could have come up with Hickman on that one. Well, uh, the for like there's different parts for damage like the damage control like facilities mm-hmm. there's soul's anvil soul's hammer well explain damage control briefly they can't they quarantine repair like they were actually in um uh mc movies like the spider-man movies yes and uh they there was a limited tv show as well that, that was supposed to come out i don't know if it actually did dc released theirs it didn't last that long so they just kind of like, yeah no. and, and marvel's like well writing's on the wall nobody likes it but it's basically the team of cleanup they're the cleaners. Yeah. And they and keep an archive of, you know, government contested. They're kind of like men, men in black, but it's not really aliens. Yeah. They're like, All right, let's make sure the public doesn't freak out on the shit that's happening out. And we have to kind of itemize and discuss all the money that's just been trashed in the city. But they have, yeah, they have a list of security items. And Soul's Anvil was, is actually from Hickman's run. And okay. this is Fantastic Four run. Right. Um, Reed builds it to fend off like uh, multiverse, multi universal threats right soul's hammer is was constructed by uh tony stark in hickman's avengers run <laughs> which was uh basically a weapon for incursions incursions were when worlds were hitting each other and that was the whole plot of that one Sweet. uh the bridge was kind of a viewing device to the other dimensions mm-hmm. not too dissimilar from uh the gateways that Krakoa has now it's just you couldn't you could just watch right right and that was another read Richard's um, invention. Then you got the uh, all the different Iron Man marks and and rescue marks, and um, it's just the security levels, right? Anti proton sling was something that Black Swan brought over from Ickman's uh, Avengers run, mm-hmm. and it was basically it just destroys Earth. Black Swan, don't worry about who that is. It's just interdimensional being that came across with a weapon that was able to destroy. Us. So that'll this come is, back when it needs to come back. Yeah, da- yeah. Damage control has all of these things. Plus a multiversal multiversal beacon, which is basically a walkie-talkie for dimensions, and and they've been instituted by maybe the smartest minds or some of the smartest yeah. minds in the MCU, Reed and Tony. So when you're thinking of, so you can expect to see them when you're thinking of the of, in later X Men issues. Oh yeah. Like that's another theory that you can go off on. And like, like if you guys are building the sovereignty nation, what does that mean for our damage control? Like, do we have to have yeah. now a new? Um, like set of instructions in case you guys go a y and we have to take you out kind of thing. Like they have to start thinking strategically of all sort of all case scenarios. And this is kind of, this is this is exactly what um, Hickman. Well, this no, this is what our guys are going to get. Sabretooth. They they want information on all this right. stuff, right? So now they've got it. Yes, <laughs> and everyone except for Sabretooth, who's now yeah, yeah. Uh, under lock and key up. by humans. Yeah. Issue two. Or do you have more things to say about the first one? F- 
fuck, I got millions of things to say, but I no, I think that's about. Oh, the orc. Oh, sorry, we got we talked about orcas, um, but what they are essentially, because uh, we were talking about damage control, but orcas uh, is a network kind of established for doomsday protocol device um, situations, right? And they are a conglomerate of X aim members, X shield members, X strike oh, yeah. members, X sword members, X alpha flight members, X hammer members, X armor, and X hydra. Right. And they just come together to make this make decisions super about, group. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> about what we need to do in case any kind of like worst situation. Yeah, happens. Yep. yeah. A worst situation happens. Which, we're, which makes sense. Which makes perfect sense. But they're almost they're yeah. We should add um, these comics have been breaking into such amazing ways to disseminate information. You get uh, a, your standard comic, which happens, and there's a lot of exposition going on between characters. So you get the conversation and you get to see like how Cyclops is interacting with Reed Richards. But they break that up by giving you kind of dossiers of all the important information. So like there's a breakdown of damage control. And yep. you get like two pages of what oh damage God. control is. There's and then there's so a, much a breakdown. But it's so it's so um necessary for an yeah. X-Men fan because especially if you're building a whole new fifty two for you to get ingrained in the world, in the universe that you're building, you want to know all these little protocols and all these little ticks because you know they're going to get referenced again. And because the plan that's in motion for Charles and Magneto's X-Men is so... Uh, in so, so in-depth, <laughs> but so specific to if they didn't have one of these little dossiers of information, the whole thing would have fallen apart. They needed to yeah. make sure that they have... What damage control was when we get to fucking, um, uh, like the the master or mother mold, like the blueprints, like we'll go issue by issue. There's always kind of important information that you can read away from the comic, so you have a depth of understanding as you read the comic. Yeah, and that was that was huge. Like for me, who was binge reading it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly There's what so I need, much, right? Yeah, because to just read it, you'd be like, um, but what does this mean? Like, if they just said damage control, I would only understand a minuscule amount of it, as opposed to telling me X Hydra, X Shield, X Hammer, yeah. all part of this. Oh, and it breaks it down, and it even says they you they, understand the importance of why yeah. the X Men need this information for what they're trying to build. Yeah, and, when, and it breaks down too when when Krakoa is announced as an as a nation, right? Orcus, that's that's when the red flag goes up. They're like, oh shit, we have to, you know, have protocols and for contingencies yeah. for this threat, we, right? We have to start in, um, investigating. So you don't need any, you really don't need any background information for X Men or mutants if you want to dive into this. You can just come in. It's a starting point, literally a starting point. Fair enough. You I don't. I would read because I didn't read that. Um, how Phantom X or Phantom X or how do I say? But it? that's not the same. That's not the same thing. It's not, but I just, I would love to know how, how Xavier got his body. Basically. <laughs> that's, that's from a different run. It is, but it, it's, it's continuity now. Uh, I know wheelchairs. I aside from wheelchair. Orcus is a, like, um, notable characters. Uh, there's a, there's a whole command thing, but what you need to know of is, uh, Aaliyah Gregor, Dr. Gregor. And, her machine li- liaison, Karima Shapendor, who's a character that you may know from before, was the Me- o- Omega Sentinel, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's... McGregor starts coming back in actual X-Men issues. Yep. She has like a... Oh, yeah. And that's the thing. He, teased, he teased out a few characters, because I remember in a few stills when uh, Professor X is saying his speech, where I was like, I don't recognize this character until I started reading the issues. And I was yeah. like, oh, no, yeah. this guy. Yeah. So, you know, the man with a plan. But if so, for the purpose of this one, uh, this read, Hickman bounces back and forth. It's so big, yeah. Hickman back bounces back and forth. He goes from uh, House of X one to Powers of Ten one, and then back and forth all the way. So we're gonna jump to Powers of Ten one. Well, there's a, there's a the reading order switches in a couple. Sorry, yeah, instances. number three I think is swapped. But, but he but he he created essentially two comic, comics. Books. Yeah. yeah. In order to fully realize his, his and vision, and the powers of ten consists of four different timelines, which is X Men Year Zero, X Men Year Ten, X Men Year One Hundred, and X Men Year One Thousand. This is the last dream of Professor X. That's what's called. Yeah, sorry, yes. I jumped right ahead. No, sorry. So in Year Zero, uh, Charles is sitting on a bench at a circus, and a woman sits next to him, sits down next to him, and knows his name, and tells him to read her mind. Yeah. That woman is Moira. McTaggart, although she's not McTaggart now. Yeah. <laughs> but, That's a separate time. Yeah. We'll get there. 
Uh, year 10, Mystique and Toad come through the strung through a portal to the House of M where Magneto and Xavier are. Uh, year 100, you can fill in any dialogue. I was just writing down notes. Yep. Year 100, three new mutants stealing um, data from the from a nexus, something called the Nexus. Right. Fighting off Sentinels. Their names are Silo Bell, Rasputin Four, and Cardinal. You don't really know too much about them. Yeah, that's for for like a fresh read. This is the one that pulled it's like, me out. What the fuck? Because yeah. yeah, they're jumping all over the guys? place. Yeah. And the only one I recognized really was Nimrod. I was like, Nimrod's in this. I'm yeah, in, right? In too, and yeah. like he he's one of the MVPs for me too because he's just a like he's a fuckhead. Like he's a, the most <laughs> sentient being. Like he's he's, he's, a, he's, he's a fucking jerk. He is, but he's he's like brainiac to like a he is kind of brainiac a devilish he? extent of like he, yeah, you're right. he doesn't even care anymore. He's just like. If it's human or mutant and it doesn't compute, he doesn't want it, so he just eradicates it. Yeah. And now that he's survived so long. So essentially, um, with this second run, uh, I think Hickman was just breaking down where they are, where they're going, where they've been, and what the potential future is. Because I don't know if the future that he gives us a sneak peek to is something that can happen, or if it's still in the... Yeah. In With X-Men, everything is kind of up for... Uh, up for grabs like they, they can always flip the time yeah house, line anytime house of x is where we are now and how krakoa is evolving as a, as a nation excuse me powers of 10 is how we got there where we're going to and where we might be going to way down the line so it's there's a lot it's all backfill for house of x right you don't necessarily need it but in my opinion it's Almost, I think you do need it. <laughs> you you do it. Back. Okay, again. It back. So it, when I first read it, I was like, "What the fuck?" But when you get into it later, it's like, "Okay, I remember this character. Oh, I remember what yeah. they're talking about here." Like there are certain things that like. So I wrote, uh, "Mora is the catalyst and the guinea pig," and for me, the MVP for this entire run. Without her, none yeah. of this shit would be happening. Nope. Um, oh yeah, because we learned. By the way, we learned she's a mutant here. Yes. <laughs> or they made they made her they yeah. they back wrote or which is fucking her crazy. Into she's a never been a mutant. No. No, but. They that's even simple change. They even cleaned that up too in either this issue or the next issue where it seemed to be dormant in her in one of her lives. Yeah. Where she beca- in one we'll, of we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay, so Let's she's spin, a mutant now yeah. and she can her power sent is essentially Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Let's just Fair enough. She's a, she's a mutant. We'll get, we'll finish this um, issue first. I will then. say that uh the Chimeras Chimeras, yeah. Chimeras, which you get introduced in this issue, um you realize are offsprings from Mr. Sinister. Who has mastered how to fuse mutant abilities into yeah. like several mutant abilities into one mutant? Yeah, actually, which I wrote is, a bunch of those. Which so is we, insane. It's like like Dan was saying, we learned Mr. Sinister is in charge of a militant mutant breeding program on Mars. <laughs> the first generation were fodder, which are mutant soldiers sent to Kako to defend it. The second and third generations were known as Chimera. Right. You're know saying second gens, the second the second gen Chimera have two powers, third gen having up to five with a 10% failure rate, who are also known as Cardinals. So, when I say powers, it's... They're merging different mutants' abilities. DNAs and abilities to each other. Typically, so, yeah. a mutant only has one. Yeah, so second-generation Chimeras have two, so you can have, like, Wolverine's healing power and, I don't know... Cyclops, optic cyclops. beam. Yeah, boom. Right. There you go, that's your two. That's third a terrible mix, but yeah, fair Third generation can have three, four, or five, which is insane. Yes, and I think that's another, for me, red flag, or not red flag, of just an indicator of, like... Yo, I gotta watch out for these cardinals. Because yeah. if you're building a society where all mutants are equal, sooner or later some of these mutants can be like, "But I'm a stronger mutant than you." The the only diff the only problem here with this is the more the further generations you go, because there's a, there's a fourth generation too, which were omega level mutants, right? But they had a corrupted hive mind, and they end up killing off forty percent of all mutants, and they committed mass suicide. So the further you go with these uh, splicings and generations. The more fucking lunatic, lunatic, there's more chance of failure. Which is amazing. Yeah, which that, makes sense. Okay, that's, so that's, that's why a, you don't have a team of Omega level mutants. But, can't. The, but that's a whole like arc right there, just going off of either a team or like some that sister went too far with this one. Like yeah. you just need one yeah. to fuck just, up the whole dream, yeah. right? So now Ras, the, the, the mutants we're talking about, uh, Rasputin, Garden on Ras, Rasputin four, four. Yeah. yeah. So her, it's like a fourth clone. Yeah, she's got. The, she's actually. A, a third gen, third generation. She has five power sets with her. Uh, so she got um, Kid Omega, Quinn Inquirer's tele- telepathy, Colossus's metamorphosis of the steel skin. Nice. Unus the Untouchables um, 
Steel Skin, right? Shadow Cat's Intangibility and X-23's Healing. So does, does X-23 have better healing than... It's the same. But X-23 is already a clone. She's a clone of, of, a clone. of Wolverine. Yeah. That's got to be something, that, in my mind, that would come up sooner than later. Because you can't keep cloning off of a copy. Like, uh, take a look at a photocopy. Well, they just took her powers, right? They just took her power set. I'm just saying, if I look at a photocopy, you always go back to the original to get another photocopy. <laughs> when you start taking the photocopies of a photocopy, yeah. or if you've ever seen the movie Multiplicity... When you multiply with uh, Michael Keaton, amazing movie. When you <laughs> never seen it, no. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> uh, essentially, he gets a clone of himself to make his life easier. Yeah. And then gets another clone to keep making lives easier. And then the clones are like, "We're gonna get a clone of us." Oh. And when they get a clone of the clone, he's not on the same level. He's kind of for Dumb. lack of yeah, for lack of better word, you know the word I want to use. That's pretty funny. Yeah. It's hilarious in a comedy sense, yeah. but in X Men world, if you're taking clones off clones. There's, there has to be some sort of ramification. And this is this run is basically Attack of the Clones. Like, everybody's a fucking clone. But we'll we'll get there. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. We'll get... Oh, yeah. We'll get, it gets deeper on the clone run. Um, um, so, beside the Chimeras, there was also uh, opposition to the Man Machines, who were... They were called... So, and the, the Man Machines are the opposition to the Mutants, sorry. So, these are Nimrod's click? Are yeah, about, and they actually... Are you talking about Nimrod the Lesser? Or, yeah, Nimrod the Lesser at this or point. Or Nimrod the Greater, which no, made me laugh. That's way in the... Yeah. That's year 1000, yeah. Hilarious that he named himself Lesser and Greater. Greater, yeah. It's funny as hell. Um, he, he would just use the sign, though. He's so, like, binary. That it's yeah. like, I'm this. Nimrod with the symbol. I'm doing the greater than and then I'm doing the less than for people <laughs> at home. That's how we would write his name. Which is what he should have, yeah. Which really? is amazing. The greater and the lesser. Uh, but no, they also... The Man Machines actually were breeding their own mutants in captivity and called them hounds and would send them after the mutant I don't want to call them rebellion but the <laughs> the, the, the opposition. good guys the good yeah. guys and they would actually turn on them and join the which makes sense so, join the mutants exactly so Nimrod got mad about that and well you can't use mutants against yeah. mutants like that's not, never gonna work I say that because one of the mutants in this issue is a hound a, a hound that has turned right she dies Silo Bell but <laughs> she, she would she she died on the right. Well, yeah. can you even say died anymore? Well, in this timeline, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah, because we're in the 100th year. We're in the 100th year. Cardinal Rasputin 4 bring the data they collected from the Nexus to Krakoa, which has got uh, North, Wolverine, um, the new four horsemen. Zorn. The Zorn, yeah, sorry. Zorn, and it's a, it, it looked like Who's Groot, but it's not Groot. It's Krakoa mixed with Cypher. It, he's, it's Groot. No, it looks like Groot, and it actually looks like... Uh, no, it's Krakoa. It's, I know who it is, but oh, okay. if you've ever seen Lord of the Rings 2, yeah, when the trees the start ant, coming alive, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He, he looks like yeah, one of the, the giant ants. trees. Yeah, he looks like an ant, yeah. And he was pretty awesome. And so like, I was talking to him in that voice. I was like, mm, yeah. Orcs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so somewhere down the line, uh, Cypher died or was dying and Krakoa took over his body. <laughs> so that's that's who that is. There's a lot of that going on there too. And there's a guy named North who's a, who looks like a green Magneto, but it's not. I was completely, yeah. I was like, Magneto's got that a looks, green yeah. outfit now? I was like, no. no. It's Polaris. That's Polaris. That's, that's Polaris' Polaris influence. Sorry, it's Polaris. It's a mix between... And Emma Frost, yeah. Emma Frost mm-hmm. and uh, Polaris. <laughs> Which is a me. I hope they did that the natural way. So it's Magneto way. with telekinesis as well as magnetism, basically. Yeah, but I hope they did that the natural way with them. That'd be pretty sweet. Exchanging Spin DNA. Off. Spin off. DJ. <laughs> Well, Spin Rule 52? <laughs> was it Rule 34? <laughs> Make it happen, Internet. Polaris and Emma Frost. With Cyclops looking through the window, just smiling. Uh, yeah, they just kind of break down um, where the populations of all these mutants are. And they're, they're all over the place. Some are on um, Shi'ar Homeworld. There's about oh, what, 10,000 in there. And then there's like eight on Asteroid K, which are the ones we're focused on. Right, and there's that ramification of, if this is 100 years in the future, at some point you know these, like, I guess, cross mutants come up to prominence, and we don't know to what extent and why, and Wolverine's still part of the team, even though he's got the gray, he's still rocking the brown yeah, and orange Yeah, he's still suits. kicking, which is crazy, because... It's kind of nuts. Well, it's 100 years, no. Yeah. But, yeah, no, it's... We'll get into the... Sorry, I thought I was talking about something else. I, well, you get into a thousand years in a second. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy because this is something you didn't need to give fans. You could have just given me ten years in year one, and I would have been fine. It would have been a world of information. But you already have plot and beat steps for a hundred years. And something, in my mind, something changed drastically that these are the four that need to go on some next mission. 
Like, I'm assuming there's... These new horsemen. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's large casualties, or Krakoa's not the same, or so- something ruptured that these guys have to s- step up and uh, take on Nimrod the Lesser. And then an uh, even deeper future goes into Nimrod the Greater and the li- Librarian, kind of discussing how... Yeah, so Year 1000. Yeah. Year they, 1000 would be the Librarian. It looks like... I thought they were Kree at first, because they have blue skin. Blue skin, yeah. Uh, but they're not. You find I, out later on. I just like how it. Nimrod said we have to record all of the great sins of history. Yeah. And in his mind, that's probably like the inception of mutants because they don't belong in the history of mankind, essentially. I think by his mind, they were, what's the, like, not abstracts or I can't think of the word where they're like exceptions. Like outliers? Basically, right? Like they were, they're. Mutants weren't supposed to happen on the the evolutionary chain. Something triggered. It. Some believe that, but some believe that the next evolutionary step too, I'm, right? So that's fair enough. I'm coming from a Nimrod uh, greater yeah, than less than okay. perspective, and he, he, I don't think he they'll ever compute that they belong in the world. No, of course not, because they were designed to destroy them. Um, but in that year one thousand, you learn that they have a a dome, which is kind of like a zoo pavilion, right. where they're housing certain mutants. And they kind of give you a tease at that. And oh, all. like the bi- the biodome? Yeah, that little dome. That, yeah, exactly. Had Polly Shore in there. That's how, that's uh, how, yeah. <laughs> and the other Baldwin brother. Um, and that's how that issue ends. I was just going to say, I think but, this book is like a warning shot through time as it ripples. Because Mara makes the first kind of drop in the water. And you can see kind of the ripple effect. Yeah, yeah. Sooner or later, these great waves are going to start crashing. Yeah. And at this point, as a reader, the only thing that I know is... Mora is kind of in charge of, or not in charge. She's the inception of why these ripples are happening. Yes, which is leads into House of X number two, which is titled "The Uncanny Life of Mora X." And that's exactly what it, it's all about. Her, her lives, and you learn about her mutant power, which is the basically the power of reincarnation. So she, when she dies, she comes back. When she's born again, she remembers everything from her past life. Right. Which is fucking incredible. And insane, because her, her first life is pretty simple. It's just... She, very simple. She was a teacher. She was a wife. She had, like, two kids, yep. three kids. Um, eight kids. Husband. Had eight kids. Well, I read that wrong. <laughs> and she died at 74. So she she was actually more of a taggart. She lived that yep. life. Yeah. Fairly simple. Dead. But then she, like, her second life, well, she realizes she, she's, she has mutant abilities because she wakes up in the womb and she remembers the death in her whole, like, 74 years. Yeah. I was like... God damn. Yeah. I'll fuck you up as a baby. Yeah. So she remembers, yeah. She remembers her life. You, you come to find out later that her, if she dies, so her mutant manifestation or her, her powers manifest around the age of 13. So they explain later that if she dies before the age of 13, she, she won't, won't get the mutant powers. Yeah. Correct. So it's, it's always after the age of 13. Um, she comes back and remembers everything. Which is uh, a great little nugget too, right? There's, for, what we're not giving credit to, there's so many little details and little Easter eggs, for lack of better words, that Hickman's giving oh, yeah. along these runs oh, that yeah. it all of these issues definitely deserve a reread just because you'll pull something new out of it. There, I would argue that's why you're most... so mad that I didn't read it when you were reading it. Yeah. You're like, Oh, I wanted to, you know, you'll pull out this different than <laughs> yeah. I was like, Probably, yeah. Um, well, that's what, I argue that some of these issues, maybe not all of them, maybe more powers, but. The second read is almost better because yep. you're, it's... You know what's coming. You, you know, know what's you, coming. You know what to start looking for. You, and you're just putting the pieces in the together. Gaps, yeah. yeah. Um, so it ex- describes how she's always pulled towards Charles in all of her lives. Yep. Um, I'm saying I'm a lot, but I'm, this is just so much going on in my head. Um, Every life... So after, like Dan was saying, after the first life and she rem- she remembers that, mm-hmm. she realizes something fucking weird. So every life, every life, she tries something a little different. The first life you already covered. The second life, she ends up dying in a plane crash. <laughs> On her way to go to study in America yes. with Charles Xavier. Yeah, because so she's she, like, something's she, wrong with me. Yeah, she. so she was doing like light light research. Um, is this where she... Okay, no. She dies in a plane crash. Mutant, or the third life. She dedicates her life to anthropology and yeah. genetics. Yeah. And then that leads her to go um, to find Charles. A cure. Well, we'll get there. Oh, sorry. She, to go find Charles at Oxford. So yeah. she... she f- like a moth to a flame, she's the moth. Charles is always the flame. She's always gonna fly to him. But she decides after meeting him because he's kind of a dick about it, um, to to discover a finger quote cure for the the mutant, um, 
disease if you, if you think it's a disease whatever you wherever you lie on that it's that first step argument. of the whole mutant dumb you know like beast was the right. same way He's like, oh i want to clean them in this life too it's interesting because she meets destiny and mystique and pyro pyro yeah <laughs> Ooh. and destiny uh is a precog so she's able to she reads obviously she can see premonitions of moira and she gets that this you come back to life all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, you remember everything. This is weird. And she kind of studies it for a bit. Moira is is very rebellious at this point. And just like... Well, not as rebellious as I would say. Against like, Destiny. Okay. Okay, against Destiny. I was just going to say... Um, and she meets Mystique, who's, uh, for lack of better word, a rebel. Like, I was going to say that. But no, she's like a militant. Or no, that's not even a bad word. Uh, she's like a social warrior. Sure. If you're so, <laughs> if you're social, I just want to, I really want to say she fucked shut up because the only reason they meet is because, um, that team of Mystique, Destiny, and Pyro go to destroy the lab yep. that's making this cure for mutants because yep. they don't believe there's a cure or that the, there needs to be a cure. They are already like, you're gifted yep. if you end up, yep. um, as a mutant. Uh, Pyro ends up killing her in this one. Slowly. So that's how she dies. Yeah, she gets burned to death. Well, did you go into her? talk with destiny about not like, really you so don't go want ahead. To? No, no, go okay ahead. so yeah. destiny basically tells her well she senses from more of that like okay you're a mutant and none of us realize that so yeah um she al- she also helps mara put kind of a, a stamp on yes you are a mutant and something that you need to turn into as opposed to turn away from yeah and that you'll probably live 10 to 11 more lives so max that's it i like if yeah. she does that you'll you'll live about 10 to 11 Max. Tops. That's that's so you can keep remembering these things, and in order for you to remember why you shouldn't be doing what you're doing now, make it painful. That's right. is to Fuck get pyro. Yeah. Yeah. She tells pyro burn her and burn her slow, so she remembers what it feels like. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah. On to four. Yeah, and life number four. Uh... She goes straight for Charles. Yeah. She teams up. She's like uh, one of the first members of X Men. This is the mutant human mutant dilemma that she runs into. Yeah, yeah where she's li- she's sharing the original dream with Charles Xavier of we one day we can all live together in harmony. Yeah, and this is the first time they actually get become romantic. Yep, um, they build X Men. You get to see, there's that nice. Uh, we'll talk about one. Uh, maybe I'll talk about a few panels, but there's a one panel where they go through the different um, stages of X Men. Yeah, so you see the eighties yeah. run. You see uh, blue and gold stuff. Uh, yeah, the or, the original where uh, Beast didn't have hair, and then you see the Phoenix Force, which, oh, I missed that one, I gotta read that shit again. And inevitably, like most X-Men, they all get killed by a Sentinel. So she dies, yeah, she uh, dies a by terrible Sentinel death one, yeah. in number four. So Life 5 is all about aggression. She's pissed off now, like, this is this is messed up. Uh, so she actually runs away at the age of 13. To go fight Charles. <laughs> yeah, and radicalizes Xavier. Yes. <laughs> Makes him more militant. And helps to an extent until they get killed by a sentinel. <laughs> yeah. Trask guys kill her again. Yeah. So she she came a little too hard at it that time. Right. Uh, Life 6 is a blank at this point. Yeah, it's a which secret. Which I made. I thought they were going to leave it like that. Yeah. Uh, Life 7. We'll skip that. I go Life 7. Okay. I wrote, fuck science. I'm a killer. <laughs> <laughs> and she is. That's, yeah. That's yeah, good. She yeah. attempts to like remove Trask from the bloodline. And in each panel, she's killing a, a, every family member. Every trust. every yeah. trust that ever existed, and only to fail because um, Sentinel technology is inevitable. AI technologies, Skynet's always going to happen, whether it's by his hand yeah. or someone else's hand. It's going to happen. That's why you get that cool panel of a different type of looking Sentinel. Yeah, and it was fucking All freaky as ones, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, 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 man. And she dies by Sentinel. <laughs> okay, so so. She kills. Tr- so remember that line: "Sentinels still happen, regardless." Yeah. Regardless. Remember it's not that because that's, yeah. that's 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 has to do with something I want to bring up later. Sure. Uh, Are you telling the audience? To no, remember? I'm telling everybody. That one person in uh, Thailand. Audience. When we get <laughs> hey, man. In- Indonesia. Indonesia. <laughs> I'm, uh, you didn't go to Thailand. Sorry, my bad. So she dies again by Sentinels. What happened to Czech Republic, dude? I don't know. Check it out. Didn't like us. All right, come back. Uh, and he this radical radicalizes her. Yes. So in the eighth life, she seeks out. Magneto, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah switch, switches styles, teams with militant Magneto instead. Does good. Like a, a G. Does good until they meet up with 
the Avengers and the X Men yeah. who both have to take them out because yeah. they're too military. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, amazing. Well, because because you imagine that Magneto always wants this one thing, and now Moira, Moira shows up was like, "Listen, just, just this gassing, happens." Yeah, gassing him up, like, "Yo, we can do it. I believe in you." He's like, "Yeah, we can." All right, let's do it, baby. But that panel was amazing too because it's yeah. just Magneto at the bottom of the the page. It's just all the Avengers. and it's all <laughs> Avengers just flooding like Spider Man's even in the far corner. Yeah. Like everybody went after him. He, they had no chance. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. So in the ninth life, oh, she dies in prison, I believe, in that one. Like during a breakout, she says, "Yeah, I just yeah, said, right. uh, yeah, X Men yeah. and Avengers basically kill her. They, if if yeah. it's not directly, sure indirectly, enough, yeah." yeah they so die. that means in the ninth life, she wants to step it up. If you couldn't go more militant than Magneto, <laughs> she becomes a horseman for Apocalypse. God damn! You went to the <laughs> first she mutant. Sick. Yeah, she, sick. she, she got, got good gear. Yeah. yeah, she got a good gear. He always he always makes them look better, man. Yeah. Angel always looked better as Ark than he did always. Ange. Uh, they go to war and she dies. <laughs> <laughs> you guys uh, catching on the theory here? It's not working out the ways that she's been trying. So now the House of X that we're reading now is her tenth life, and Wait. it kind of unfolds as we're going. So she's learned that you got to think she remembers everything that happened in these past lives and every painful death. Like she remembers all. It's not just the memories, it's the pain associated with it, yeah. it's the heartache, it's the emotional trauma. It's... What she did to that made Magneto go like this, what she said to make it's Charles all... go like that. It's all so... the skill set too. So like she's proficient with Charles, Magneto, and now Apocalypse. Yeah. So remember that, because I feel she belongs in a certain place deeper down the line, but I don't think she gets shined for it. So I'm that's not. that's that's your bookmark to remember when we get there. Oh, but uh, yeah, when she gets to Mora Ten or Mora X, which I feel like Mora X, yeah, that'd be cool. a great uh, like Malcolm X type of poster. If you do Mora <laughs> X in cool, there, yeah. uh, she just goes complete militant. She's breaking all the rules, and this is the run that we get where yo, we're three issues in, and you can tell nobody's playing the way that you would thought no. they would play, or how you've ever seen them play, minus Magneto, because this seems pretty spot on to everything that he would have done anyway. Well, what's, what's fucking cool, what's so cool about this power set too is that it gives Hickman, this is Hickman's excuse to go back and rewrite things he didn't like. So any event that you could think of from X-Men's history, whether it be uh, Inferno, Bendis whether it be something Iceman that Bendis gay. did, Iceman, gay. Iceman being gay, uh, whether it be... Iceman's not in this. Iceman, no. We'll get into that at the end. Because um, he's off where being gay? <laughs> I Nothing think, wrong with that. I think that. they changed that. I don't know. I don't even know if it's got... She's fluid in, now? I don't know. Maybe, Pansexual? Maybe he's bi. Who cares? Because you'll get pushback if you're like, we're changing his gayness now. It's like, no, wait just, a minute. Just just leave him as whatever. Yeah, pan. What, I don't... Who he was... Who cares? He went from... I do, because he went from banging out Polaris to like, I'm banging out dudes now. I was like, Bendis, no! Yeah, well, that's Bendis, though. You could have made Cyclops... I mean, uh... Colossus, Colossus gay, yeah. Not Cyclops. Cyclops Who get it cares, in. though? Who cares, Cl- Clearly. Though? Do you want me to what say it? What the fuck was I saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this right here. Um, yeah, you're talking about that? how Hickman re- redid his whole history. Yeah, you can Anything you, can you didn't change. like, he so, could change. So anything in anything that he didn't like, for example, or anything that didn't make sense, he could just slot into one of these timelines. Yes. Oh, you know what? Uh, second coming happened in this timeline. So it didn't really... It's not current in this tenth line. So it's pretty... It's sweet. He almost has a clean slate. But without kind of pushing things to the side, it's more like, that happened, but it happened over here. Is Second Coming where Nightcrawler died? And that was a big arc than that? Yeah, he did that. Yeah. yeah. Well, everyone dies. Yeah, he did that. Yeah. <laughs> I you're, forgot about that. You're, you're, be- you're easier to find X-Men who haven't died than X-Men who have, because they've all been dead. Except for, I think, Storm. Which leads us into Powers of Ten, number two. We are now together, you and I. Um... In I hope Storm is in this because I already brought her up. She's in later. She's here. In so in the X year zero, Charles and Moira recruit Magneto and humble them right quick. Which is this I, is cool. This I, is really cool. Before you get it, I wrote Moira does what two best friends couldn't do for sixty years and bring X and Magneto together like that, like that. Read my mind. That's it. Yeah, he's like, can I trust you, Charles? Like, yeah, sure. Trust Take me. your helmet off. Oh, oh shit! Oh, shit! Best friends, best <laughs> friends. Like you idiots, gonna have a fuck. You yeah. guys play chess all the time. Yeah. You guys can fucking talk this one out. God damn. He's like, so we, we lose. This He's is like, this may be yeah. the first instance of pussy may get you killed. Oh yeah. We He's don't know yet. Killed. It's hypothetical. You think so? But this would be it. It's like that if that girl didn't team us together. Yeah, this exchange is cool though. This I I enjoy. I always enjoy Charles and and Eric going at it. 
But I just, just I love, just conversate. Yes, I love it when they're on the same team. Oh yeah, for sure. And only ha- they, it only happened so briefly that when it on this level, I couldn't wait. I was salivating. Uh, in X Men Year One, Xavier and, and Magneto show Cyclops the Mega Mold plans and Orcus and Nimrod's origins. And this is this is also really this is a cool issue. Actually. Yeah, it really is. I love the blueprint of him because you actually see his face. I don't know why yeah. I keep calling him Master Mold. I feel like that's something, but it's mother. there's two different ones. There's a Master Mold and oh, okay, a Mega okay. Mold. There's right. like they're... there's no Mother Mold. There's a Mother Mold. I there's fucking. Well, I have it written down. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. So the Sentinels, the Master Molds, the Mother Molds, and then the Omega Sentinels. Sentinel. Okay. So the Mother Molds above the Master Mold. Yeah, this 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 issue was great because you get a taste of what everyone is now doing in this time. To the point of X and Magneto briefing Cyclops on assembling a team and what you'll need to do. You just get a brief kind of glimpse on what needs to happen. But you get great character kind of emotion from Cyclops who's looking at them like, this needs to get done. Yeah, like, yeah. does it need to be like, done? It needs to be done. And, and, and you you know there's something more there. You'll, you'll get it later sick, on. Yeah. But he, I want to say if you look in his eyes. But the... the the panel I'm thinking of, it's just directly into his, and he's got a new, um, I think, a uh, visor, because he's got the little retina thing yeah, that goes, goes back, back and, forth. and forth. Yeah, I enjoy that. Like giant LaFor- Jordy LaForge. Jordy didn't have the back and didn't forth. Didn't he thing. have the fuck? Who, 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 oh, I think Alpha Five. <laughs> Alpha Five had that. And <laughs> yeah, uh, Alpha 5. any fans of uh, what the fuck, Battlestar Galactica? I think they had those two. I, I think Zylons. That. Neither did I, but I know weird things from robots and stuff. Um, they basically give him a mission and they say go assemble, but you know this is kind of a giant mission. Um, they don't give a lot of information other than no. Master Mold, Mother Mold, Mega Mold is computing and you need to stop it. Uh, in X-Men Year 100, uh, Apocalypse Wolverine, Rasputin 4, Cardinal, Percival, Salwell, Zorn, Krokoa slash Cypher, North. Uh, yeah, North. I think that's everybody. Basically, all of them go on a suicide right. mission to retrieve um, some information. Right. From... The clutches of Nimrod. Nimrod the lesser? <laughs> the lesser. Or yeah. Nimrod the greater. I don't, I don't remember which one. I think he's lesser. This is no this is lesser. The great the greater well, is in the year too 1000. Far there, yeah, 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 yeah. He's a little well, the that, that's buzzing we'll, around. we'll get there when we get there. Are you yeah. talking more about year hundred or you want to go to a thousand? Year hundred, yeah, that's okay. the fight, right? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, that is the fight. Damn. Oh no, it's not. It's the setup for the fight, rather. They're setting up that the, they're gonna split up. And half of them are going to go full yeah. frontal. And the other, one and the other three... Back, back door. Yeah, they're going to do back door to the inside. Uh, year 1000, X-1000. This threw me off. The Phalanx. Phalanx is back yeah. now? Ugh. Yeah, the Phalanx are like this world... Ugh. We won't get too much into them right now because this is a very vague shit, but the librarian... But it's going to happen. Yeah, no, we'll, but we'll cover f- the Phalanx when, like, later on when it makes more sense. Okay, fair enough. The librarian's like, oh, I, I want ascension into your ranks. And like... We are failings. Yeah. Suck my toes, right? Yeah. It's like, whatever. Couldn't say dick? <laughs> oh, maybe they don't have dicks. Fair enough. Have, but you don't know. They, they don't have just dicks, these yeah. blobs of... They have toes of other things to <laughs> compute. Yeah, and they're not... They're not technical organisms. And they're not... No, they're... They're, abs- they're all... They're like all beings. They're just... They're like... What's the word? They're like light. Like, anytime... They're like a, what a soul would be, potentially... A phalanx is an interstellar society that operates on a galactic scale and represents an intellect that has total control of a host galaxy. Amazing. And you know where we got this? From Hickman. From the book, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was looking for. At this level of society, an intellect exists only to expand its own intelligence by consuming lesser societies and to control the energy needs that expansion demands. So that's what the librarians are doing here. Like, let us into your ranks. Right. We want to be assimilated by you to join the higher powers because so the, the failings are always feeding on societies l- lesser than them, which is anybody but them, right? If a failings encounters a society that is worth consuming by adding to its intelligence needs, then ascension occurs. If a phalanx encounters a society that is not worth adding to its collective, then it will see that society with a techno-organic virus. This virus will eventually produce a, be- b- 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 a babel spire that will summon a technart to remove, repurpose that societal waste from the universe. Hickman, you nerd. <laughs> These are Borgs. <laughs> this is straight Borgs, bro. I'm a bit of a geek because I know that too. But it's like, yeah, you're 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 worthy. You can come with us, or we're just gonna eradicate yeah, you from you're, history. Yeah, either you're with us or you're done. 
But that's just one definition of what's in this book. In and case. that and that's year thousand. So that's not even shit. You're like that's. I ain't worried about this. Not yet. Not yet. If if that happens, because we just switch. So instead of jumping to House of X three, they want you to go right to Powers of, uh, sorry, Powers of Ten three, which is good because it picks up right where, uh, X one X one hundred left off. Where Cyclops had to go get a team assembled to go on this mission. No, not Cyclops. This is the Powers of. This is the one. Yeah. Once more into the breach. Part six. Yep. Five is what we do. Oh no, my bad. This is what you do. Yeah, you're one hundred. This, this is what we do. Z- Zorn, North Rasputin, and Cardinal attack full frontal, like we were talking before. Wolverine, Krakoa, and Apocalypse sneak into the index. Now, remember, this is the Krakoa uh, with that is consumed. Um, what's his name? Cipher. I forgot his fucking name. Yeah, he's a tree dude. So, so he's, he's a not, dude walking. He looks he's like on an island. Yeah, looks like Groot. He's not an no, island. He looks like the trees from Lord of the Rings. An ant. They're called ants. We'll say ant. He doesn't actually look like. You're Groot. talking about geeks. I read Lord of the Rings in grade six. Anyways. Uh, grade six? God damn. Yeah. We just did The Hobbit in grade nine. No, I'm a... It's a rough read. Massive nerd. Well, you have a podcast. Yeah, about comic books. About comic books. So, hard to argue that. Um, Yeah, so in... Are you talking about year 100? Which yeah, is cool because... Number. This is cool because Omega Sentinel is is talking to Nimrod like, I don't like what what's going on here. That whole scene where he's like... He's just like, yeah, ignore what's going on. And she just keeps looking at him. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, this is weird. They're acting weird. Yeah, it's this like, is... okay, well, you go fucking take care of the ones that are fighting us. Right. I'm going to stay here and be a geek. And this is with the Church of uh, Ascending... Ascending? Ascendancy. 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 Yeah. Although crazy Z-Lots that love Sentinels. Yep. Idiots. Yep. Um, yeah, so they break into two separate fights, essentially. Yeah, so the big fight happens at the front gates, and that's with uh, Omega Sentinel and her lackeys. And then Nimrod ends up catching... Um, what am I thinking of? Activity, right? Within like arc the archives, right? So he shows up, and that's when he fights Wolverine, Apocalypse, and Krakoa. And Apocalypse is like, "I got this," <laughs> and he has to oh, fight like yeah, he has to yeah, fight yeah, all yeah. a bunch that was, that of actually, Nimrods, yeah, right? That was a great like, run of panels, which is fucking cool. Um, and and just crazy to see Apocalypse fighting, yeah, on a Nimrod. The, the good side? Seen, yeah. yeah. While Wolverine takes him to... Fro- yeah, to- so he takes the info to a frozen in time ninth life bar. So this is Moira's ninth life. We learn that Powers 100, mm-hmm. or X to 100, is her ninth life. Excuse me. Which uh, gives more depth to the lives that she was living and understanding where she is in relation to uh, Moira 10. This is when she became the Horseman 4 Apocalypse, right? right? So they they frozen her in, in a stasis pod, and, base- and what the information they take from Nimrod's archives... Mm-hmm. Wolverine basically injects her with it and then kills her. Nice. So that's that ends her ninth life. So she goes into the tenth life knowing what she knows about how Nimrod was created and whatnot. Just if you're keeping tally, this is the first time uh, Wolverine kills Moira. Yes, thank but, you for that. But won't be the last. Uh, Omega Sentinel, this is has nothing to do with story, but this is pretty cool, is blown away when Rasputin takes Zorn's helmet off. Yeah. That was pretty fucking cool. And then it's... Because yeah. under his helmet is just like a black hole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And everything gets sucked into it. So Sentinels go in, X Men go in. He, he's just a doomsday uh, device, essentially. But the entire, I think this issue is the one where like he's just saying things that are all fatalist and like this yep. is the end of days and stuff. Yeah. And I think it's who's who's the one in blue? Rasputin. Is it Rasputin? The, she's blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's just like, could you be any more darker right now? Yeah, yeah. Zorn is just like... He loves it, though. Yeah, but he, like his commentary through all this <laughs> yeah. is hilarious. Like He knows this is kind of like a suicide mission. This is the it. So he's saying stuff like that, and it's hard for the team to like feel encouraged yeah, yeah. <laughs> about the mission, because yeah. it's just like... No, no, it's a suicide mission. We're going to die. Uh, that leads us to House of X... Talk about suicide missions. Number three, yeah. Uh, once more, Unto the Breach. This is where you're talking about Cyclops. Assemble Strike Force, yeah. His team. He's got Wolverine, Husk, Archangel, M, Jean Grey, Nightcrawler, and Mystique to all go to find the... This is a master mold. Yeah, which is cool because I... I when I saw Money St. Cross, I was like, this is sick. I like her because she's... Bas- she's basically a female Superman, which is fucking Nuts. insane. But yep. she's not well known, and neither is Husk, who I don't know much about either, but nope. she was... Her power is essentially she can ch- change her skin, shed her skin into uh, a different uh, form of material. Right. So I want steel. Boom. Okay. I want rock. Boom. Okay. I want mud. Boom. You know? Don't pick It's mud. gross. No, don't do that. It's stupid. <laughs> Favorite villain. Stupid. <laughs> uh, 
But yes, that's his team, right? So you got to you got to them all before I cut you off, right? Oh uh, yeah, I, I yeah. went to all of them. Yeah, which is a crazy team. That's it's a crazy good. strike force. Yeah. Anytime you have Cyclops and Wolverine on the same team, you know it's gonna be good. And Marvel Girl. Well, you know. Yeah, Marvel. And he, and so they jumps to Sabretooth on trial at the Achilles, uh, and Emma Frost and the Cuckoo show up. Yeah. So we have this we we haven't. Too seen Sabretooth since the first issue. We want to know what's been happening to him. He's in cuffs. He's on trial. He's laughing at the, the lawyer, and the judge. He's at, like, so let me hang on. There's, so Achilles, sorry. I said he's at Achilles, but that is, it's a superhuman, uh, super maximum security prison. Right. With It only holds, it only actually holds 30 people. Because they're that Because they're the worst of the yeah. worst. And he's there, so he's on trial. Go ahead, sorry. I just wanted to get that back straight. And <laughs> to prove to how dangerous he is, they're just running off the list of... Um, Charges against them. He's like, yeah, I maimed them. I, I killed some people too. Like he's he's in he's same tooth fashion. Yeah, he's, a prick, he's yeah. enjoying everything that's happening to him until doors bust open and it's Emma Frost and her, her two goons essentially <laughs> to extradite Sabretooth. Yeah, her cuckoos. Yeah, two of her cuckoos. Yeah, to extradite uh, Sabretooth to Krakoa because he's now a citizen of. I like how this country. Yeah, I like how they're, they're like they put up resistance. Like, no, you can't take him. And she's like, actually. I can. I can. And she's got the forms and everything. She's like, this is document that's saying that he's part of our nation and we're taking him. So. I love this little nugget in there. That was like, um, how do you like this Emma? She's amazing. She's I awesome. love, but uh, how do you not love every Emma? <laughs> every Emma I've ever she's met. She's well written. She's not great. always well written. I like her written in this. Anytime she's, uh, uh, intellectual, she's fine. I've only seen her non intellectual in a couple things. And then she ends up getting another dude to do all the shit that she needs to do. Anyway, I just like the little nugget of, um, we're not going to let them call us by our given names. They'll be calling us by our code names. So don't call me Emma Frost. Uh, don't call me, yeah, Emma Frost. Call me the White Creed. Yeah. Don't call him Victor Creed. Call him Sabretooth. We're yeah. going to take Sabretooth out of there. Yeah. It's just those little tweaks to yeah. like, this is a separation between humans and mutants now. You guys don't even get to call us by our real names. Call us by our code names. Great. Loved it. And uh, they get Sabretooth out of Krakoa so they can actually put him on real trial against other mutants yep which it's sick we're taking we're taking him we're ta- he's ours to ours yeah can't touch him can't touch this um so just so i don't know if we were clear earlier when uh the things that wolverine put into moira's mind but in her ninth life before they before he killed her it was, like was nimrod's stuff. origins yeah yeah i don't know i don't care if i covered that or not but it's it's like a crystal that she he like basically embeds into her suit, like yeah. in the center. And it just absorbs it. Like, that suit designed by Apocalypse. But it looks like Tony Stark's uh, arc reactor. Yeah, it kind of does. And it just yeah. opens up and takes it, swallows it. She gets more information. As- assume it's like a floppy disk going into a computer. Well, her, her whole thing was that she learned that... Um, I don't know why I said floppy disk. Immersion. <laughs> <laughs> There's a track. Yeah, basically. Uh, they're, they're Dead immer- technology. A VCR tape goes into... While immersion AIs are unavoidable... Um, Anti mutants like Nimrod are not unavoidable. So, so that's why they want his origins. So they could, like the Sentinel, he is inevitable. He isn't inevitable. He is he's avoidable. The AI itself isn't, but his, his specific design, okay, his is. version of it. Yeah, that's what they believe. So that's what they believe. Let's, yeah. I'm on the other side of that. I think there's always going to be a Nimrod. More than a foul foul X. I hate that shit. But well, here's do I do you want me to tell you this twist right now that I think sure. I think she's going to actually design Nimrod herself uh-huh. to take out humans. Ooh, that's what I believe. That only backfire. Exactly, but she's fucked. Backfire. She's twitched. She's like, as you read more and more of this, of, you're saying Mara Myra is, fucked, is yeah. like, that's what I think her end game is, or her main goal is, or her last life. Why would you want the origin of it? Okay, you well, have I, it in your hand. You I, can turn that around, right? right? I I always looked at it as they needed to know at what point it starts so they can stop it. Like, it was the whole run when they went back to go find um, Baby Sinister, or Baby Apocalypse, and kill him. Oh, Kid Apocalypse, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Yeah, you, you can go. stop it, or... Tweak it? Because he's AI, you can tweak it. Tweak it. Turn it around on people, right? That's not that's not smart living 11 lives. I don't think so, either. That seems I'm just like saying. That's... That'd be somebody else's plan to do. But I'm just we'll, saying. We'll get to there, because I believe she should... Anyway. Uh... So they take they take Creed away, and then uh, Cyclops Strike Force lands... On the Orcus Forge, which is Soul's Hammer. We covered what that was earlier. Okay. And Kurt Bamps inside. Let's see Bamps. Is it, this is the part six. Yes. Yeah, this is the part Okay, six. yeah, yeah. Uh, Kurt Bamps inside, and the rest of the ship docks 
Oh, Remember? these l- l- next two are the best. Yeah, the Strike Force ships docks onto the station where Mother Mold is being built. Yeah, yeah. and on top uh, of a sun too. I don't know if we put the whole scope of it. Like that's right. They're powered by the sun. The, the, the power. The power plant is hovering over the sun. Um, that's really <laughs> all the background yeah. you need to that. Yeah, yeah, there's a big sun under everything because the Mother Mold, you see, needs that much energy. And she gets started. She creates nano sentinels, which are sentinels, which are omega, omega sentinels and nimrods. So you take her out, <laughs> then no more nimrods. Theoretically, no more. Right? No more, yeah. Anyway, here we are. They Anyways. bamf on. They dock. So Kurt bamps off. Nightcrawler bamps off. The to rest look of around them dock, to go do recon. And Doctor Gregor's like her and uh, Karima. So uh, omega sentinel. No, they're coming. Right. So they're like, we got to stop them. So she sends her her boyfriend down there. He ends up well, like they they're like okay, they know that uh, intruders are um, coming, so they're yeah. like go to Dock Bay this side, go to Dock Bay this side, and then they land right on top, yeah. and they make a hole. Yeah, they, they make their, their own, own dock. Yeah, yeah, in 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 the middle right. of the yes. the space station. I was like, yes, bang, right. Um, little did they know, and he's like, in order to beat them, we got to surprise them. Right. So he, this guy Erasmus, blows himself up. He's a, a I com- was like, goddamn. Yeah, he kamikazes it, and yeah. that that just throws the whole mission on. It's fucking side, because I think like two X Men get injured out of that. Like I think well, okay. Archangel gets something which, in his side. Well, which leads which leads to House of X number four, which happens right afterwards. And okay. Oh wait, on this one. Yeah. Oh, what's the part called? Are you moving to the next one? Yeah. Are you? And now we're into. Uh, it will be done, which is powers of. It says part seven because I did them all by parts. Okay. But this is the uh, seven or eight. Well, don't pay attention to part seven because it goes. It's twelve parts. Okay. If they combine them all together. Right, right. Um, but yeah, the in the previous uh, issue, the ship exploded. Or sorry, uh, yeah, the he kamikaze. So well, he exploded part of the space station as yeah. well as part of the X Men ship. Yes, Archangel and Hux die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right from jump. Well, you know, Logan she didn't is, see that coming. Logan is blown apart, but he's healing back together, and Nightcrawler suffers some internal injuries. So they right away they knock away two people that I guess they they took a big bro. Whatever. It was a, it was a good move, right? Yeah, because you would assume that X Men would have had to jump on them. Now this is really cool too because it shows us how Krakoa operates uh, its hidden secret, which is it has Trinary, Storm, and Beast doing. Uh, tech, she was a tech, Trinary is a technopath, by the way. So she, she speaks through machines, right? Uh, her she's analysis. Analysis. Storm is invocation. Beast is observation. Right. And then the cuckoos bind them all together with Professor X's. Uh, he's the ability? connection, yeah. right? If I'm talking fast, it's kind of weird. Just this is they all have to join together. We'll, re- we'll read the goddamn comic then. Yeah. Jeez. But they all have to join together in order to contact to be in contact with um, Jean, Miss Marvel Girl. Yeah, Marvel Girl, all the way up in fucking space. Right. And we also didn't say this as a. Uh, they were boarding the ship, still all alive. Uh, Cyclops said, we're going we're gonna to need to find another way back because we're not going to take any flowers with us. Right. In case we get captured or something happens, we don't want the That's enemy right. to There's... have understanding of how we travel through. Right. So... It's a one-way trip. That, that in a sense, kind of put everyone on um, alert that this may be a suicide mission for everyone. This may be a all in, but not... All, all of us are going, but not all of us are coming back. But it's for the... The greater good. Because they're going to be... Preventing Nimrod from being created with this mission, right? Which is amazing, right? It needs to be done. Um, so, so yeah, they speak to Gene, which is really fucking cool. If you want, if you read the book, because it's really cool how it all comes together. It took you seven issues to read the book, really. Read the book. Yeah, uh, it's plural. So yeah, with the help of money, saying uh, with with the help of money, Gene is able to talk with to help of money. Money, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's how she's able to amplify her 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 telekinesis or yeah. her powers to talk, to speak to them, and, and they she manipulates through water like she yeah. to, she's yeah, a talking storm. head yeah, yeah, yeah talking head through a pool of water that's or like whatever goo that they use because you figure out that coco has got some special and they kind of just tell them they just kind of give them a heads up what's going on right it ends up going Scott's like no we got this so Scott Logan Kurt and Raven all move to different parts of the forge. To disengage the the pieces holding Mother Mold together. So there's four bridges essentially, and yeah. you need to 
un- unhook them. It's, All four, and she'll go drifting into space. It's fucking Star Wars A New Hope. You gotta yeah. lower the tractor beams. Yeah. <laughs> Damn you, Hickman. I'm, I'm on to you. You Star Trek Star Wars lover. Um, and they're successful with, I think... Lo- Logan and... Oh, is it? Logan and Kurt knock theirs off right away. Easily. So boom, boom, done. Um, Raven does hers as well. No, Cyclops does his. So that's three down. And then Raven... Here's the weird thing. Raven's got... So Mystique's got the... She transforms to people to disguise herself. Right. She walks into the place, like, just with her blue skin. Like, what's... <laughs> You know, she's so proud. Like, fuck, man. Well, she's so proud of not having to be hidden that she didn't hide. Well, then Dr. Gregor and Omega Sentinel are sitting right there and like, uh, nah, bitch. <laughs> she also didn't bring her game face on. They launched her into space. She's never really been an X-Men, so. No, but you'd think she'd be, you know. She didn't. She came in her dress, okay? I bet Chameleon would have transformed. Oh, God. <laughs> her disguise. <laughs> you don't want to see my face on Omega right now. But anyway, she gets launched into space, which is fucking funny. Hilarious, but useless. And they realize w- the one coupling is still attached. attached. Yeah, there's one more bridge. We need to lower it to fucking complete our mission. But it's already turning sideways. We've already lost two people. People are injured. What the fuck we're we gonna do? Yes, yeah, so, Cyclops was kind of right. This looks Jean like a su- gets, suicide mission. Jean gets launched into space with she, the pod. She gets into a sp- escape pod. M just knocks her out through the not knocks her out, but throws her, and then she turns into Penance, which is really cool. Yep, and then uh, in order to give Jean enough time to get away, she essentially sacrifices herself yeah. and uh, fights off a horde of people. Yeah. Not to, well, she didn't fight off because she's dead. She's dead too. And Wolverine and Scott Nightcrawler. Scott makes the call. Scott makes the call. Yeah, you got to do He's it. Like, you guys, you guys, you, you good? Got, yeah, you could do, do it. And they're like, like yeah, yeah, we're good. We'll do it. They have a nice back and forth. Yeah. I wish I wrote that down. We'll, we'll, like of what I want to say, Kurt and. James, I'm gonna go James Howlett. Ooh. Talk about the, the, uh, just like a nice little pairing of like we've been friends for a long time, yeah. and uh, Wolverine's worried about dying. He's like, I'm not really worried about death. It's just I don't even know if I'm gonna make it there. Yeah. And uh, Kurt's like, Oh, well, when you get there, I'll be there waiting for you. Right. Yeah. So a nice little. It seemed like if Kurt was the preacher, he was absolving Wolverine of all of his sins. Yeah. It and he's like, I'll, yeah, I'll, see, I'll, see, I'll see you on the other side. Well. Uh, whether or not you you realize it, Kurt has always been the the faith and the kind of the the priest and the the dedicated kind of he'll make the sacrifice yeah, for the faith yep. of it. Yep. When all of them are devout, but don't always believe it to that extent. Anyway, they bamf. They bamf into space on the like, you're in space with the sun like right literally behind you. Behind you. So as soon as they bamf out there, that girl see, immediately just burn. just burning. <laughs> it's, it's amazing panels. These are some of the best paneling. Um, in the the run, he's immediately cooked because boom. it's all of them in silhouette in yeah. the foreground, and then it's just a bright orange glow in the background, and you see them fading just away, apart, yeah. and then you just see uh, Wolverine, Wolverine just, just clawing out yeah. as he's getting peeling away, and as he breaks the final bridge or connect, um, he starts falling with um, Mother Mold, Master Mold, Mega Mold, Master, this would be Mother, mother this would be Mother Mold, yeah, and then like. Gets a final snit in as they both hurdle to the sun. That was amazing. Yeah, it was I, really I, sick. I love that was one of the best deaths. And Logan's just all right, and, and Scott's just like, it's done. Yep, we did it. We got it. And he gets his head blown off too. Well, he but, go. Yeah. He, he's like, Gene, where are you? Um, and doors open and boom, boom, boom. I think it's Doctor Gregor that comes through there. Omega Sentinel. Yeah. yeah. And she, Dead. She blows his head off. Boom. Um, and now Gene's like crying back to everybody at home HQ, like, yeah. yo, everybody's dead. Like the mission's completed, but everybody's dead. And then um, just, I love how it ends just like no more. Well, okay, I wrote there. Uh, Cyclops tries to find Jean, killed. Yeah. Jean escapes in a pod, but Sentinels find her, killed. killed. Whole team dead, killed. Uh, mission completed? Yep. Dead. <laughs> mission <laughs> but, completed. But, but everyone's dead. Everybody dies. This is my favorite issue of all of them. Yes. Like, this is, wow. And I wish it was punctuated more with time. Because what they do to. And later, ep- yeah. we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. We're almost there. Um. Yeah, and then uh, it ends with uh, Professor X Tears. Yeah. Like no more. Like yeah. he lost. He lost Just all no of. More. He lost all his favorite children. All of them. And some he didn't Except even Storm. know. Yeah, it, Storm's still there. Okay, he didn't MB. lose all his favorite children, <laughs> but he lost like A some top ones. Yeah. yeah, top tier. Well, some top tier, some not so much. No, and it, that's nobody's, what we're saying. Nobody's he gonna lo- miss Husk. He, he lost. Nobody's some, gonna miss Husk. He lost some favorites, and then some <laughs> like. Well, I never really liked. I don't think he ever liked Archangel or Nobody's, Worthington. No, Sam. I like Archangel. You like Archangel, but I like Archangel. I don't like Worthington. I don't like him too much. A bit of a snob. 
You would think he'd be more pious. Nobody's going to miss us. You, think, you would think he would be more pious being an actual angel, but he seems more of a devil may care than anyone. Maybe. But uh, they're dead. Which leads us to Powers of Ten, number four, which is aptly titled... Uh, something Sinister. Something Sinister. This Way Comes. Oh, I like that. Isn't it? <laughs> Does something this way come? Uh, year zero, Charles and Eric <laughs> visit Sinister Gang. <laughs> sinister Gang. They are. Bar, bar they, Sinister, yeah. yeah. To inquire about his mutant DNA cataloging, ask, and they ask him to make it secure and safe than is getting a mind wipe of why he's doing So, yeah. That's a... Wow. I really compressed that. They go to visit him and it's hilarious. It's yeah, hilarious. Charles just shows up, still wheelchair. Yep. Um, this is like, your zero, yeah. Yeah, so yeah it's, it's like, hey man, um, I know you know me, I don't really know you, but I need a favor. We know that you're cataloging DNA of mutants. Which you shouldn't be doing. But shouldn't be doing. We're we, going to let that slide. We want to help you with that. Do more. <laughs> he's, like that. he's like, what? Do he's more like, we want to help you with that, but you have to make it available to us. Right. And... We're going to mind wipe. Or no, they don't tell him, do they? No, they don't tell don't him tell, Sorry. They just give him more um, accessibility to get yes. more mutants to yeah. do more uh, Like, research. catalog away, we're going to give it to you. And what happens is Charles actually mind wipes that conversation. So he doesn't know why he's doing mind. it, yeah. but he knows he's doing but it. But he knows he's doing it. And now he has more access to doing more mutants. And you're like, what the fuck's the point of all this? This is weird, right? But Not really. That's what I was like. This is Why would they... Like, making a deal with a guy named Sinister... Not to mention Mr. Sinister, who we know very well. Yes. You, you're asking for trouble. Um, yes and no. I feel like... Well, first of all, they don't even know if they're talking to the real Sinister, because the first they're one they so meet is like, yeah. ooh, a cape. Yeah. Why don't I have a cape? <laughs> I need a cape. Like, he's, he's really fascinated by Magneto's cape. Yeah, he's very amazing. flamboyant. It's hilarious. Just, this issue is... A, it's, it's a complete opposite of how the last issue ended. It's good. It's a much needed break because yeah, you're fucking yeah. you're dragged at all these X Men dead and yeah, you don't know what's gonna it's happen. Emotional next. that one. This one's this one's funny. And this one's like, hey man, there's a lighter side to cloning and <laughs> gene splicing. Yeah, in year in year X year ten, uh, it jumps to Charles Charles and Cipher right starting up the Krakoa into a nation. This is it cool because did you so this is Cipher, not Forge. This is Cipher. Oh, yeah, they do another thing. Forge is later. Okay, later. Forge is later. Okay, okay. And they do Cerebro. Yeah. Uh, Cypher is, his mutant powers, he's able to talk to anybody. Right. So he brings him along to talk to Krakoa as the a island, man. island, yeah. What's cool about this is, you notice the way he's dressed was actually the same way uh, Cassandra Nova was dressed her first appearance with the with the hat. Oh, and I the, didn't know. The, yeah. He just looks Savage Land ready. Yeah, well, that was on Cassandra Safari, Nova. Yeah. So that's a throw to her. So that's, I don't know where they're going with that, but. That was kind of cool. One of the many Easter eggs that you can pull from this. Oh my god, we're, we're glossing over a bunch of them. We'll we'll pick out the ones that we can find or remember. But there's a. Cool we'll tell you what we want to tell you, okay? Fuck a bitch. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Subscribe. So Kakoa talks. Patreon. To them. This is actually pretty. This is <laughs> this is pretty funny too because Mac welded. This is pretty funny too because uh, Kakoa talks broken. Yeah. The way tra- way Cipher tra- Doug transferred. Oh the way Cypher translates, translates what Karko is saying isn't it's all broken full English. sentence. Yeah, it's just like and Charles like so he's sad. He's like, well, well it's, it's a little deeper than that. And he goes this long detail. <laughs> it's like or something like that. Yeah, I'm like sad. And basically, he talks about them about Surtur using the Twilight Sword to split him in half. So Karko is actually half of two beings. Entities, ones, yeah. yeah. Okara or Okaro. Well, this is great because you get a history on Karko and then you find out how cool Apocalypse was. Cause yeah, because he's the original defender. Yeah. So, essentially, um, the two parts that were of Krakoa, I don't know the other name of it, Okara. but they were, it, it kind of reminded me of Mandy because they were like demons that kind of inhabited the the dawn of the universe and if they had it their way, <laughs> it would be a different version of Krakoa. They may have just overrun it and turned it into their own kind of playground. But if it hadn't been for Apocalypse, who was the first mutant fighting on behalf of Krakoa, to push all these uh, other entities Demons, yeah. yeah, back down to wherever they were, they wouldn't have made it. So I think that's the first instance where Charles gets a feeling for Apocalypse could be a and, friend as, as opposed to and what he's get, always been. And above. you get a sense here, too, that this is where you kind of get the feeling that, not the feeling, but the the, fa- the confirmation that Krakoa and Apocalypse go way back. Right. So... They're cool. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's, <laughs> that's there's, fine. There's, that's... Yeah, there's, there's no love, lo- there's no, it's all love there. Yeah. 
This is also where you figure out where Cypher helped create four systems, transit, monitoring, defense, and observation. Ah, yeah. Good, yeah, yeah. And then you find out who's in charge of those, which is a, a great little nod. You don't get to see much other than who's in charge of it. Uh, sorry, I didn't even finish. So, yeah, and you, and you understand The four this. systems are transit, transit and monitoring, defense yep. and observation, secondary and external systems, and overwatch and data analysis. And so you get the idea that, I don't know the idea, but you get the, how, the realization of how important Cypher is to all this. Right. And probably why him and he and Krakoa were merged together to to make that new being in the year uh, one hundred. One hundred, yeah. Well, they've just they talked to each other. They're able to talk, right? They were just becoming lovers from early, and now uh, they just bit the bullet and. Did you talk about who was in charge of all those? I did not. Okay. I didn't get to give it. So controlled by Sage is one. Transit I be- monitoring, yeah. Black Tom Cassidy. Defense and observation. That's amazing. Awesome, yeah. uh, Trinary. Trinary, yeah. Secondary. So I say technical. Trinary. Okay, fair enough. Shout outs to Trini from Power Rangers. And the man, the myth, the legend. Overwatch data analysis. Who else would you have? Hank McCoy. Hank McCoy. The real beast. So those are all important integral parts to the way Krakoa operates. And just in terms of scope, if we're talking about, we're, we're in what, issue eight? Powers of X... Powers of 10, 4. Yeah. So we're, we're eight issues in. Each, again, each issue has given you another level of what you need to understand about Krakoa, how you build a, a nation, how each, um, how like each working part needs to have a, like a function and like a, a necessary, like a military or a defense or uh, a overwatch or like he keeps adding to this world that he's building to give you more depth to how integral each mutant is to the success. An operation, yeah. And the day-to-day, right? Like, everyone's got a job. Yeah. It's not just you're going to paradise and, like, it's not Temptation Island, you're just fucking for, like, a year Some and of them are, but there's there's a there's a good few dozen or more that are, yeah, like you said, they all have jobs. Like, it's like, this is... Right, and I feel like that's another, like, arc that can go many places because oh, there, yeah. there are people in specific pivotal roles that have a, like high security clearance and then we'll get to later issues where there's a lot of people just running around drinking and fucking yeah yeah because that we'll get to that that becomes a rule too yeah of like oh yeah yeah we'll get, we'll get to all that mutants fuck yeah <laughs> they're getting it on i couldn't help but to uh notice the madeline Pryor and inferno references in that nice. in that in the whole twilight sword Good thing so that's pretty cool so that's i think inferno has a lot to do with this story and there's confirmation of that later on. And there's this little uh, caveat here that there are rumors that two forge built a large subterranean laboratory to help build bio, uh, biological machines as well. So even as much as we see and they're giving us, there's so much more that's probably underneath the surface that we're not seeing. Cause how like, this is a question that I kept asking myself moving forward. How well can you really trust a militant Charles? Because some of my favorite issues is when Charles says you got to see the, the other side of his mind, or when his mind took it too far and like, yep. he killed all the mutants and shit. Like this, is a man that not only got all the information, like not only are you one of the strongest mutants ever, and you created a walking cerebro, two, and you stole somebody else's body, three, but you've now <laughs> created a own working society where you're bringing in all these past mutants that were friends, foes. Closer, so enemies closer. You you also you must have several contingencies for your own people, let alone the people that are trying to attack you. So, what's underneath it? Like you know, his defense system has got to be fucking insane. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We'll get there. Uh, there's a little bit of year uh, one thousand here, which I still don't fully understand. Which probably is why it's going to be so great if it ever pans out the way that. Well, we Hickman know is planning. essentially we know that the phalanx only. Well, you learn here that the phalanx only uh, assimilate machine structures. They right. don't. Mach- they don't. They don't, like uh, they don't assimilate biological yeah. beings, right? No, no organic. So the librarians here are like, hey, let's transfer our consciousness to machines, and that could be assimilated, then you can have us, yeah. and that'll. That's that's essentially what's going on here. Whatever. <laughs> um, later on, I'll skip it ahead. Later on, you learn the librarians are actually part machine. So, useless. So they're not even mutants, right? They're part machine, and that's why they want to be assimilated in the sense that you, we they want they want to yeah get rid of the organic side and go full so we can be assimilated and become part of your Mechanica, yeah. superiority, more or less. Uh, it takes us to House of X number five society part this, part nine in our twelve part was, issues. This was 
fucking cool, man. This hmm. was one of the cool. This is my other favorite issue. This is nuts. Yeah. Um. So enter the five. Good. So you want to get right to that? I'm gonna enter the five. You can let me know if you know any. Not you. Like, well, fuck, whatever. Gold balls, Tempest. <laughs> Wait, start again. Gold balls, <laughs> Tempest. He chose that name. Yeah. No, he was. I think he was awarded that. So gold balls and Tempest. It's funny. They're from the same. Bendis run. They were created in the Bendis run on Kenny X-Men. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Tempest was cool because she was able to create pockets of time displacing or time control. Right. So she could make a pocket of like this whole this whole block could freeze. Right. Really cool, really cool itself. Gold Balls was able to create and shoot gold balls. Like Dragon Ball. Spheres out of his yeah, like Dragon Balls without yep. stars out of his being now seemingly that sounds dumb but in the right hands hickman oh, hickman changed it completely he so, added three other people so Go- gold balls tempest proteus my boy if you go back to episode five where we talk about villains yep he's, he's one, of, one of the ones yep. i want out uh proteus elixir who's not bad underrated and, and hope, hope summers hope summers who we who haven't had one, heard from in a, a long time yeah. and had one of the best uh x-men runs yeah ever yeah and then just disappeared into Obscurity. Oblivion, yeah. Which so usually he, happens with anything related to the, the Greys and Summers. So Hickman here grabs... This is what blows my mind. He grabs five underappreciated characters or underused characters... That you would, that seemingly would have no connection to each other. No, nothing. And puts them together to... Make them kind of high society. Yeah. These are... If there's anyone if there's anyone that could be deemed royalty Un- or kings of queens... Of, Cro- of Krakoa, it should be these five. Unfucking believable So Fabio, who's... Fabio Cortez, who is Gold Balls. Um, <laughs> Only call him Gold Balls. He actually changed his name to Egg. <laughs> if you think. Not then, even Gold Egg, no, eh? No, it's just Egg. So Fabio, Fabio Medina, sorry, I said Fabio Cortez. That's Fabio, I'm thinking Fabian Cortez, the villain. Fabio Medina creates eggs. So they find that these balls are actually eggs, eggs. that come out of them. Alrighty, good uh, re- 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 uh, rewriting. With Proteus's... No, balls are eggs. So Kevin McTaggart, with Proteus's uh, warping reality, his power to warp reality, he ends up transforming the unviable eggs that are being shot out of uh, Fabian, or right. Fabio, into viable ones. Just call them egg. Egg, sorry. Call them egg. He's able to, to make them viable. Then they're injected with the preserved mutant DNA from Sinister's collection. Correct. Then Elixir is able to kickstart the process of cellular replication. So she makes a clone. Elixir, no, Elixir does. Elixir cr- makes the DNA start to run and and. Um, so she does process. the um, he conception. Sorry, Elixir he. does the uh, conception. Is that the egg, and then it splits to another egg, like yeah. the zygote. Yeah, he starts that. Now all they need is time, where Tempest comes in and creates a pocket of time. Yeah, Eva Bell, where mature, she's able to pocket time, so they, she speeds up the them, process, yeah. mature them to the age where they left off. And Hope together unifies all them, all of them together, and peaks their mutant ability. So it's at the top, it's at the top heights. of the game. Yeah, so they don't have to wait to Amazing. age thirteen. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I'm like, this is fucked. That alone could have been your entire run. You could have done a whole arc on just these five. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Incredible. I was the, like, the, I was reading this. I had to go back and read it again. I was like, let me just get this straight. This is fucking... This is kind of like a footnote amazing. to yeah. everything else he's building in this giant universe now. It's hard to say a world now, because even though we're just talking about Kokoa, it's a universe. Because he's pulling X-Men from kind of out of the ass, the ones that have been left out in the cold. Yeah. And like, okay, no, you're pivotal. We were never going to see gold balls again. Like... <laughs> His name's Egg. <laughs> Sorry. We were never going to see Egg again. And here he is. And here he is, like, Top being... Five. And even to the point now that, like, saying. they say... I, I, I can't remember which... Uh, or if it was just, like, the narrator or, like, maybe someone saying that, like, they they enjoy hanging around with each other now. That, like, these five have become, like, a new family. Like, yeah. they enjoy this whole yeah. process of, like, essentially liberating and recreating mutants again. They're they're repopulated. It's like they're planting trees for yeah. all the trees that we cut down and burnt down. It's amazing. Yeah. In like a day. Now, like a day. so of course they bring back the Suicide Mission Squad. So all those guys that died in the last issue in House of X4. Cyclops, M, They bring Angel, them back, yeah. Nightcrawler, now, Jean, Husk, Wolverine, Money, Husk, <laughs> Money, so with the help of Charles, so they come out of their husks, the eggs, these new, sorry, these new husks out of the eggs. Nude. And Charles is able to... Like Terminator. 
Charles transfers their soul minds into the new bodies. From using Cerebral and yeah. his power set. Yeah. It's a little weird, but it's... It is, and it was a great kind of... It was a weird panel where he's essentially birthing his son, Scott, again. But I just love when he put the visor on him. Because you see, like, yeah, Scott's about to open yeah. his eyes, and you see the sparks of the optic blast. And he's like, no, no, no. Puts the visor on him. He's like, now open your eyes. And he's like, oh, shit, I'm back. Yeah, because because Charles has a backup of everybody's mind. And yeah, he's again, ready for this. He's that, ready again, for this. but that makes for me that makes Charles that much more dangerous. Yeah, because there's because he's thinking ahead. Uh, they talk about it in later issues that like he needs three days of uh, complete like nobody bug me so he can like back up everybody all the mutants to Cerebro. Like he has every year he does like a whole like. Um, soft copy yeah like soft copy Backup. download and then like uh, the, there's a specific time where he does like a three day like okay I need full concentration nobody fuck with me because I need to do the full run for me that, that that's an arc yep. of like if someone disrupts that or what happens or what's the what's the but like what's the morality to that right like he's you're playing they're all playing gods now yeah. at this point yeah. you're, you're already gods but now you're like we have this much control we can do this so like on one side of it, it's like, sweet, we can repopulate mutants, but you're making clones. Yeah. And you're in charge with giving them the correct consciousness. Yeah. And there's a little footnote about, like, they haven't tried putting a different consciousness no. in a different... Imagine that happened. This, that's good. That, but that's, going, that's yeah. going to happen. How is that not going to happen? Whether it's trickery, whether they, they, they switch something around, whether there's an accident... They're, some of these minds are going to go in somebody else's body. Now, there are restrictions to this resurrection process, so they can't just go around and revive anybody willy-nilly. There are limitations. Um, ex- extensive testing has shown that the mutant resurrection machine, so the, the five, uh, is not operating under duress or fatigue or even mass exertion. It appears that the more they do this, the stronger they become and the easier the process becomes, but um, initially the resurrection capabilities of Krakoa topped at around 1,000 mutants a week or 200 a day. The current estimated mutant population on Earth is around 100,000 and growing. The depowered population of mutants on Earth is just under 1 million. And the deceased population of mutants on Earth is over 16 million. Okay, which is primarily from Genosha, who right. had a wild death rate. <laughs> that, that and uh, they made a little reference to Scarlet Witch, who took out her f- yeah, fair the, share. The, the yeah, yeah. So at that rate of resurrection, it would take around 300 years to, this pro- to bring all. back everyone who died let alone how to address the depowered mutants that any of them might die in the interim time period. So uh, they don't even know if they can repower the depowered or what the ramifications are if you even play around with what's going yeah. on in there. So the more they do it, the better they become, but there are limitations and it does take time. You can't just go, we're going to bring back everybody today. No, no, it, like I said, 300 years. They're just they're, estimated they're figuring so, out. Which what, is cool. What they can do. Yeah, you, got, you have to put, you have to put limitations. parameters on yeah. it. And even that, I feel like they'll end up trying to push. Probably. Someone some would be like, no, we have to get this guy back. That's not, yeah. And a deal that, th- remember this resurrection yes. clause, because that comes it's up important. later. Yeah. Um, but I, I just want to say, as they're being rebirthed naked to the world, there's a like a seminal moment where Storm... The ceremony, re- yeah. Yeah, reintroduces them to the mutant, naked as a jaybird. Um, she's like, how do I know it's you? She she asked each of this, and they all have like little personal stories that they relate with Storm. She's like, yes, you're my brother. So, and uh, who is he? And she screams that out to the the, the crowd that's gathered around mutant, them. He yeah. is me, and they all scream out "mutant!" Right? So like, it's so an empowering the, moment for all of them. The Gene one, where she comes and she's like, "How do I know it's you?" And she's like, "There was only well, how did she say? It? There was only there's, well, there's only, only one. one." Yeah, the one. That's mutant. actually a throwback to Uncanny X Men two forty two. That actually ha- exact thing happens. Oh, nice. Where she's like, "How do I know it's you?" She thought it was a clone or whatever, and she's like, it's, "There can only be one me." And it's like, "You're my you're my friend." They help him. I mean, right? but it's just throwbacks. It's just. Awesome nods, right? Uh, it's, it's great paying attention to the previous mythos and acknowledging it and then moving past it to make it our own. His own. Or Hickman or whoever you want to be in charge yeah. with. Yeah. But when it comes to Gene, who's literally had the most cloning problems of anybody <laughs> else, I don't know if that's the best line to use. Because you're not really you. You yeah. are a clone of you. So yeah. for me, in my head, sure. I'm like, there's got to be some sort of ramification. If you, if you want to pull at that that thread right like if Hickman's like I want to blow it all up let's fuck with these clones because yeah. right now like you could make a division of who's a true mutant and who's a clone of a mutant and already there's a separation well right like if I make it I'm like I'm a true mutant or like Apocalypse I'm a true mutant 
You're just a clone. It's like, but I'm not a clone. Anyway. Uh, so then you jump to Charles, Emma, and Hank at the UN, which who while they're there, they're registered in Krakoa as an official nation. Congrats. They're drinking champagne. Really cool. they're yeah, they're happy. Yeah. They're dressed nice. They're going through everything. You find He's out, still wearing the helmet, though. Yeah. He's, that's just come off. It never or it does come off, but you never see his face. No, that's that's weird to me. Because uh, you, know, it's not his face. Yeah. Fucking Charles could be the greatest mastermind, evil villain of all. Is it even Charles? Oh, is it, is didn't it even think about that. Is it Cassandra Nova? Didn't even think that. Oh, I don't know. It was even Charles. Well, Mara would know. Yeah, but maybe she's maybe that's the whole point. What? Charles wouldn't go along. All right, we're getting to the end. We're getting to the end. All current. Uh, then they go through the mutant diplomacy. How there are some nations that rejected. Correct. Um, the 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 drug, the the trade, yeah. the, the bartering system. Yeah. Uh, do you want to go into more it? than a hundred have accepted, but there are ones that rejected, and it's either for political reasons or ideological reasons. There is one standout that has a third reason, but we'll we'll talk about that. Uh, talk about Wakanda. Yeah, Wakanda does not need the mutant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's like we're, we're good. We're we, good. We got science and technology under under. Uh, that goes with Kenya, Kanan, and uh, Zania. Yeah. They have economic protector from Wakanda. Yeah, they're so... na- they're neighboring countries, and they already got deals. Basically, with everybody from Africa that rejected it, they're fine. They're good. Yeah. Um, the other nations, ideological or political: Iran, Mandripur, North Korea, Latveria, Russia, Brazil, Santo Marco. Terra Verde, Venezuela, and Honduras. I love that Latveria was in there. Sick. Of course, uh, it's got to be in there. <laughs> uh, the and ramification Ma- of that Madri- Madripoor is interesting to me in there. Um, Who's from Madripoor? It's the like the the fuck the island that everybody goes to. That's like the exotic nation. It's kind of like Marvel's Dubai. Okay. Okay. I thought you say Genosha. No, no, it's more like more Genosha like, rejects it. Of course, you would Genosha. Fake, fake, but Labyrinth, you asshole. Yeah, of course, Labyrinth has got to be in there. Oh, of course. <laughs> we, like, they don't have none of that. Yeah, not I would love to see him at the UN. And be like, no, no, nah. <laughs> no. I vote against. Like thumbs down. No, <laughs> like it was almost unanimous except for one. No, no, it's no, just, just a thumbs down. <laughs> do <Doom>, no. <laughs> Loved it, but amazing. Again, you get to see the building blocks and like the workings behind the the scenes. Yeah. Because in typical X Men, I love this. I love this. Yeah, scene. yeah, I thought yeah. it was awesome. Like this is perfect. Typical X Men comics. You're great. just gonna see battle, battle, battle. Nah. Gene cry. Give me some, give me or some Scott cry. I like, I like a bit of politics. Gene run away. Scott cry. Wolverine brood. <laughs> With the picture. Uh, on to the <laughs> yeah, on to the next comic, right? This one's like, no, these are the inner workings of how you become a nation. And then after that, it opens up to everybody you don't expect to see well, come to Kagoa. First off, before we get to that, it's still Beast and well Beast is still hobnobbing. Emma and oh, right. Professor You're X right. yeah, they have, have a, a conversation okay, of like get into that. Get into that. Yeah, of like um so I like Emma's basically like, well, y- you're welcome, Charles. Like you needed me. And he's like, well, actually, I have. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure you have a higher position for yeah. me in Krakow. And he's like, actually, I do. But we yeah. need something for you. And she's like, what could you possibly need from me? I've already done how many things for you. Yeah. We need a uh, Sebastian Shaw back. Yeah. And she's like, what the fuck? Yeah. The black. He's black king, right? Yep. I just finished getting just him out of, of, him, yeah. of the Hellfire. I'm running shit. You want him back in now? And he's like, yeah, we do. There's a specific reason, but we need him back. And that reason being, for uh, black market contacts. So all the ones that rejected the drug, they still want the drug. They still want the drug, but they, they just politically can't, rejected it. They can't it. say yes, and they don't want Emma getting her hands dirty with all the black market stuff. So Sebastian Shaw has all the connections. So if he gets caught doing it, they That's just fine. cut him loose, you, you, right? You Whatever. Him. Yep. So he's got the connection. So he'll do the black. So basically, every nation is going to get this drug. Right. These, sorry, these drugs. It's just how you're going to get it. Yeah. It's just. On the level or, or illegal, yeah. yeah. And um, in exchange for bringing back Sebastian Shaw, she wants to name her own seat too. Correct. So we didn't really well, talk we'll get about to that. Count. We'll get to that, man. We still got to. But we didn't even talk about seats. So when we say that, they don't even understand. Fine. We we'll get to seats. That's we get to the panel. Thing. We get to the amazing panel at the end of this comic. Well, where all the villains come. Yes. That's what I wanted to get to. I was just like, well, yeah. So sinister shows up. Um, Walks through the portal. Yep. Sebastian Shaw shows up, Walks Exodus, the, and his Stargate. acolytes come through, Omega Red hole. comes through, yep. Apocalypse all appear, and I'm just like, oh, oh boy. I don't know if uh, Omega comes through. I know he got contacted. Oh, you're right. So you're right. You're right. He met, but I, he, I don't, 
I thought I saw him, but maybe I didn't. You did see him. There's a panel where they show Omega Red, but it's like a hologram of Charles as like he's just ah, mind okay. morphing with it. All right. So Charles sent a, a waiver out to all mutants now. Like he already did the, that speech. Yeah. Not that oh, speech. Oh, no, before that. Because that speech goes out to the world. Yeah. This And he already sent out a, a initial speech to all the mutants that he can trust. Now that every building blocks are in place, they're actual official uh, recognized country. He now sends out to all of his past foes as an olive branch. This is the message of, hey man, I know we were, we used to be enemies before, but you're a mutant. I'm a mutant, but we're now on the same level. Come through. Come through. <laughs> Reach. <laughs> Say what's up. We're having a barbecue. And that final panel of this issue my, <laughs> sent my mind reeling. Well, not even... Sh- be- shaking hands. But don't, before oh. we even get to that, like, um, they're, so they're all waiting outside of the gate, and it's basically, I think it's like Charles... Uh, Magneto and Wolverine, and Wolverine's like, "Are you fucking sure you can trust That's this right. motherfucker?" This is the one. Okay, so this is ah! this, this is big because this is the <laughs> nice job. Yeah, this, this is the one time that any other mutants spoken up against anything that's been going on. Going Everyone's on. just like, been yes, yes, yes. yes Are yes, you yes. sure this is a good idea? You're inviting apocalypse. Yeah, you're bringing a fox into the house. Like, are you sure you want to do this? Didn't give a fuck about Sinister. Doesn't mind no, Exodus. It's apocalypse. You sure you want apocalypse yeah. in here? And Charles is like, yo, he's a mutant. Don't worry, we he's got He's the this. first mutant. Yeah. All and right. and it's a fun All right. It's a fun throwback because you know inevitably Wolverine ends up trusting Apocalypse if he ends up taking up the horseman role as far. war. Yeah. yeah. So this is a nice not a full circle moment, but the the initial hesitance of uh, uh the first version of Wolverine. Maybe the Wolverine we used to read. Yeah. Mistrusting of a lot. Yeah. Trusting of only a few. Yeah. And this one is like, all right, man. We've come this far, and then let it ride right now. But Apoc walks. I'm not happy. Apoc yeah. walks through the goddamn portal, and looks around like he has a moment where, for me, it just kind of looked like Thanos after he finished yeah, was, snapping yeah, his finger. Yeah. It's like, look what I've done. Yeah. And even though he didn't really do this, but he kind of did because different versions of him helped get to this point. The fact that he now gets to see the fruits of his label because this is one of his dreams too. It was just like I wanted yeah. mutant uh, supremacy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I want to this on top. Uh, so that jumps to Powers of Ten, number five. And then they shake hands. They shake hands. Well, you cut me off on that one, so I didn't want to talk about you, it. you got to talk about Wolverine <laughs> saying no first, right. man. That's huge. Yeah, that That's final huge. Panel is crazy. The final panel is crazy. It's, it's just huge. It's just Charles shaking uh, Apocalypse's hand. He's just like, welcome, welcome home. And now you got my mind wondering if like, that's even Charles ooh, shaking his hand. May not be. Uh, powers of Ten, number five. For the children. So uh, Year Zero is your Forge. The Forge, not... The, the person, the character Forge. He, he looks, wait, the Forge. Yeah. The Forge. The Forge. Not th- Forge. Him and Charles are talking about a new <laughs> No, version. it is Forge. Yeah. I not the Forge. Yeah, Forge. I was saying not the Forge. Okay. Bef- okay. He's what Charles talking about a new version of Cerebro that can copy and store mutant minds. I just want to say Forge looks super light skinned in this. Isn't it? He's an Aboriginal, a, a native. I mean, cartoons, he was like mulatto. Yeah, that's why you're mad. That's why, <laughs> he was Chicago. That's why you're mad. I wanted some color on Forge. Forge is basically black every time. Like, he, but he's I, not supposed to be. He's, I mean... Originally, he's native. Natives are more black than anything else. They're more black than white. You know what? Podcast over. <laughs> <laughs> so Chuck Meeks Forge. But yeah, so the, the new, this new version of Street Bro is powered by Shi'ar Tech. And it has which five is, backups. Which, which is, is cool. a bit yeah. awesome. You get yeah. a little Shear fucking nod. Um, so that kind of goes that that kind of back back checks everything that was happening with the um, the five reincarnating or resurrecting people from the dead, right? And how uh, Charles was able to give their minds back or minds and souls back. He's got in, uh, alien tech doing all the work for yeah. him. He just keeps and downloading, it, right? Stores yeah. it, and they re they they renew it or up. Upload. They re-upload it every was it a week or so, uh, every month. There's a, there's, a, there's a pace that they re-upload, so it's always a fresh one copy. So it's not a copy from a month ago. It's a copy. It's a current copy. Yeah. I believe it's every week. And that you go to year ten is how Charles and Eric recruit Emma and make her Hellfire Club. We talked about that. Yep. Hellfire Corporation now. That's right. They've become a subsidiary. Contributor of the drug. Genius. The sole contributor of the drug. That was yeah, pretty yeah. fun. The back and forth. And then she's like, uh. Um, and Charles is like, oh, we'll do like a five year run, and she's like, ah, uh, um, fifty year, yeah. <laughs> fifty year run. It's like five. Yeah, she's amazing. I love Emma. 
This is where Charles sends out the invitations. Oh, and this is where they. This is this is probably where I saw Omega Red, where she sends out the invitations to all the enemies. Correct. Namor, including that was amazing too. Namor, and he just like, you think now? I'm just realizing now no. that I'm better than everybody else. No, 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 I already knew this. <laughs> it's like fuck off, little man. And here's a quote because <laughs> we we didn't even talk about how like each issue opens up with a a quote from one of the titular characters. Either it's yes. Magneto, Professor X. There's one from Apocalypse. Yep. But there's for this one, I think it's um, Namor's, and it's like. When you see me, then you know it's time. Or yeah. like when you see me, you know. Basically, from what I divulge from it, it's like when you see me, you know a war is coming. Like I'm at your foot. I'm never gonna come as a friend. I'm not gonna or an chill. Ally. I'm not just gonna hang out. Yeah, if you see me, the problems are happening. Yeah. Right. Just to see Neymar in this is amazing too. And he's just like, and he's such a prick. I love it. He's, he's like, no, like, I don't want your piece. Like I got dude, fucking Atlanta, dude. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah, I don't need you. You don't need me. Uh, uh ex- so you, you never know. Yeah, year one thousand, we jump back to the failings things. How it's connected to black holes and machine societies and their forever hunger and their acceptance of terms of sovereign. It's weird. The failing stuff is weird and it's vague. It's still kind of vague at this point. But we they're kind of covered it. They're putting more kind of. I want to put like Emphasis? tracks down. Yeah. yeah. Because they they want you to know that they, how uh, there's the other thing here is there's a there's a theory I just keep pulling that they're all consuming they're, they yeah, they all, all the, the, well, all information they they introduce theories here that not black holes aren't random they're uh, an actual connected machine society right and they all have a purpose right and it's the forever hunger <laughs> and and it's just a back and forth in the phalanx and the librarians about you're gonna accept our sovereignty or or what and they kind of like we'll get back to you right. That, I, don't, I don't like it yet, but yeah. I don't know we'll, how it's we'll going to explode on shit. Jumps to House of X number six. This is the last, this is the, the penultimate issue. Yep. I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. Charles, Eric, and Moira, Terms to the World. This was your speech at the beginning. Yes. Amazing. Awesome. Tells you everything you need to know about Chuck. I'm not taking no shit. No mo. Yep. And now we got a whole squad against me, and we got a country too. This is where we can talk about the council being formed. Woo, woo, woo! Which is fucking, oh man, so cool. So it? let's talk about, do you, you get the... The great captains? Yeah, let's talk about that first. Because a lot of these guys I felt could have been in here. Yep. But thankfully they're not, I think for better... So while the, quiet, while the quiet council is recognized ruling authority on Krakoa, when there is a state-related excursion or in times of conflict of war or war, the great captains of Krakoa assume the responsibility of defending the state. In the field, the captain has total control. Among the captains, the captain commander is considered first among equals. That being Cyclops. Correct. So there's no presidents. There's no, no. Um, whatever. Mayors or judges. There's Emperors. There's a, there's, there's always a council. a council. There's always a group of people. And there's great captains. And then it falls to one person if the council can't make up their mind on that. Amazing. Or in, in times of war, the general is Cyclops. Named? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. The three others are Gorgon, Bishop, and Magic. Amazing. Dope. I haven't heard from Bishop in how fucking long, so yeah, I didn't get to sick. see him, but I like, I, I like that he's na- I like that he's named. He's militant as shit. Magic was awesome because yeah. she was part of the Phoenix Force too, right? Oh, yeah, the Phoenix Five, yeah. Yeah, Phoenix Five. I love that run. But just her other, her other worldly connects too, right? Like that's... That one goes deep. And then the third Gorgon. one. Gorgon. I'm not com- that familiar with Gorgon, to be honest with you. It's, he's the fucking uh, ninja dude, the... Uh, Bushido yeah, Blade? Do, yeah. Is he like the rabbit from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? No, you see Sagi with Jimbo? <laughs> <laughs> no, different. <laughs> that's, that's a deep laugh, sir. No, he's got the he's he's got like the Medusa stone gaze thing and the telepathy and teleportation stuff. I'm sure I'll he's get a, to see he's him. A, he's in, a fight. Yeah, I'll just, I'll get, I get the, a... the, the concept with these four is they're all fighters. Yes. All militant. Oh, all don't fighters. back down. And all very We got we got Gorgon's kind of mythical, right? Bishop's, inter- he, he time jumps, yeah, yeah. and Magic got the dimensions, right? Cyclops is grounded, but that's well, why he's the captain. But sp- they all have different angles. Space, time, what would you say Gorgon is? Mythical. Mythical, and then Cyclops is your A- A1 steak sauce. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Love it. So, that, that's just those guys. That's just the generals. Yeah. That's not even the council. No. The council is the crazy shit. Council's sick, because they're split into four groups, which is... Well, five groups actually: autumn, winter, spring, summer, and then Krakoa itself, which is Krakoa his, has his own group. Krakoa and, and Cypher. Cypher, yeah, and they oversee. The oversee was good. and they'll, st- they'll step in. Yeah. yeah, they'll step in when they need. They're step just kind in. of there. Yeah, they're like yeah, oversee. Yeah, they yeah. just oversee everything. Now, autumn. What? Before you get into this, 
can we go back to Emma and her deal making yes. abilities? Yeah. So as Chuck is trying to get Emma to bring back Sebastian Shaw, Emma being the savvy businesswoman that she is, she gets a 50 year contract. Uh-huh. She probably gets stock options. <laughs> well, she's the sole contributor to the drug too. Correct. That. that as well. Um, That's huge. And she gets an additional seat on this council. She or was already Red King, yeah. She was already going to get named to the council, which is amazing. She deserves to be on it. And now knowing that she had to bring Sebastian Shaw on, she's like, I need another seat. Yeah. So there's one spot missing. There's one spot missing here. We know who... For this run. Yeah. yeah. After this run, we know it's filled. We'll, we'll go into it because we have better... Well, we had a whole theory... Well, I had theory list of who I wanted okay. to be on there. All right. We don't need to do it. Now you can go through the run of everyone else that's on this council. Okay, so Autumn... The three seats in autumn, Professor X, Magneto, Apocalypse. Amazing. No surprise there. Three alphas. <laughs> Just the, the fact that they're all sitting next to each other was amazing. Cause yeah. It, it's really, uh, really weird seeing them. I think it's like Professor X first, or like the farthest seat. Yeah. And he's little, but he's got this giant dome dome. Yeah. Then it's Magneto who's in his all white, just yeah. kind of like cinematic. And then there's like this hulking out dude of <laughs> Apocalypse and he's just towering over them. It's like, what up though? But he's just calm. He's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to talk about here. Yeah. It, uh, it reminded me of uh, in Dark Knight when all of the bosses are just sitting around before yeah. Joker walks in. Yeah. So my like missing dude is going to be like a Joker type of character. It's like, yeah, but it might just You don't be... want to be too wild on the... Well, oh, funny, funny you say that. Yeah. Go, to, go to the next season. The winter season. Uh, this is the wild card of what I'm talking about. Mr. Sinister, Exodus, and Mystique. Mystique's a wild card too. Woof. They're all wild. That's all Woof. wild card. Talk about keeping your enemies closer. Yeah, that's Although uh, I feel you can trust Mystique, but she always has something up her ah, sleeve. You can't trust Mystique. I mean, if there's anyone that can trust Mystique, you will hope it's Magneto. Because up until this up until this issue, she's been doing missions for him. So yeah. they have a working relationship at the very least. But she wants her one thing is she wants Destiny revived. Right. Oh, well, we didn't. Get we didn't that. That. No, but she says she yeah, wants yeah, Destiny back. She says that in earlier issue. That's how you get. She gets her seat. Back. That's her homegirl. Uh, the spring seats are Sebastian Shaw, Emma Frost, and blank. Then the blank. So the Black King, White Queen, and Red King. The other ones don't have names for each other, but these she named. They're Hellfire Corporation. Whatever. That's yeah. what they run. The summer run or summer seats: Storm, Jean Grey, Nightcrawler. They so they're going to be good soldiers for Professor X. And I think those are the only three that can actually combat him with logic. Yeah. So if they speak up, it's something that he'll pay attention to, yeah. as opposed to if Sinister speaks up, which he was during the entire kind of conference. When we get to the, is this the issue where they yep. bring back Sabretooth? So he's just saying random things and like only like three people are listening to him. Like everyone else is like the business at hand, right? So so they, yeah, this he's is, comic relief on that. So Sabretooth, yeah, he's hilarious. So, so Sabretooth comes back and I know he, remember he's trying to threaten them? And and I'll Emma's, kill you Emma, all. Emma's like, like Emma's like quiet. And he's like I'll kill, and she's like quiet. And just, <laughs> and starts drooling. Drool. Yeah, and Mister's just like they, it's the drool that yeah. adds. The, you know, <laughs> they lobotomize that him really makes it. Yeah. So this is the council. These all, all these guys get to oversee what's going on with Krakoa and, and as big Krakoa things going on. The first matter hand is dealing with Sabretooth. Sabretooth and his murdering of people, Mur- murdering and the maiming. Yeah. Right. And as of one of the rules that they were trying to instill. Um, it's three rules. Well, I was going to get to that, but they yeah. just want to make sure that mutants are judging mutants, which is basically right. what, what Emma was right saying now. Yeah, when she went to meet with uh, the judge to get him. So now, here they are, judging him and establishing the first set of rules that this council and community and country will now need moving forward to be successful. Make more mutants. Rule number one. Mutants make mutants. Make more mutants. We gotta fuck. Murder no man. Because yes. they don't want the heat. Correct, because they assume that's a greater, um, like, rule broken than murdering another mutant. Yeah. Because be mutants can take care of mutants. But if you have to go out of your way to go find a human kill, that's yeah, that's, that's, high, fucked. that's high treason. That's fucked. And number three, respect the sacred land. Which is Krakoa, Krakoa, yeah. So don't be pissing on trees. And don't stuff. murder no mutants in here. Yeah. Those are just three you simple can, rules. You can fuck here, just don't yeah. fucking kill here. But because Sabretooth killed a man, or... Human. Human. Humans. They decide to basically lock him within the island of Krakoa. They, 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 they exile him. They exile him. They no, don't no, they lock exile. him. They're like, he's stuck in... No, no. They open up the earth yeah. and they drop him into a pit. Into a pit. I know. But he's still in Krakoa. He's just in... 
in stasis. He's basically oh yeah, because exile means away from, but he's yeah. exiled. Because they're like, we're okay. not gonna we're not gonna release him back into the world. My theory is it's like um, but he also he, Thor three, and it's just like when Loki keeps dropping for like thirty. Oh yeah, it's minutes, probably it's, something like that. Yeah. He just keeps falling. And falling. He's falling the whole time. Ah, well, ah. what's interesting here is that, and I, I think this is foreshadowing. Charles actually says, "If we need you again, we'll call I'll upon you. you. Yeah. Until that time, you're stuck." Oh yeah, to like make your case if he has probation. Yeah. So S- Sabretooth is an ongoing problem, I think, and something that would inevitably come back up. Yeah. Even if he... That's what I mean. He's going he's gonna to come back. Even, even if tooth and nail and he spends like fucking 30 years crawling up a hole, they'll be like, ah! Like he's he's going to ha- have his revenge somehow. And it ends with a giant party. <laughs> yeah, a celebration. Well, they... I wrote, celebrate good times. <laughs> they figured out their... They made themselves a country. They sent out the rules to that country. And now they have... Um, like command or the council in place, uh-huh. so th- there's accountability. Before it was just Magneto and um, Charles. Charles, like okay, we run things. But the one person I feel is missing on that team is Maura Taggart. Well, she's you learn that she actually wants to be hidden though, so she's in hiding, right, on purpose. Mm. She felt like she was. We'll get in. We'll get a little bit into that too. Fair enough. Uh, and that goes to the last issue, uh, Powers of Ten, number six. House of X. It's called House of X. Keep it simple. Year Zero, it's a retread of the fair when Moira met Charles with oh, a bit wait. more added. Sorry, before we get into this, let's talk about the party because there's some great Easter egg nods oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, we were yeah, talking about ahead, before yeah. that I fucking loved. Yeah. So after the big part, after they throw <laughs> Sabretooth into a pit, <laughs> they go out, starts fireworks, beers are going around, everyone's handing out a drink. So historically, Marvel Girl and... Uh, Emma. White Queen, I'm gonna go on the Sorry, White Queen, you go ahead. Code names do not get along for several reasons. But my favorite reason is there's a dick they both enjoy. Yep. Um right now this dick, sorry. <laughs> Scott is with Marvel Girl. So in an attempt to make peace, in like three panels, Jean comes with a, a drink, I guess a beer, to give to Emma, but they're both facing opposite directions, and she hands the beer behind her. And Emma picks up the beer from behind her. None, none of them turn their face, right? So it's just acknowledging of like, yeah, I get we're both here. We can be kind of equals, but I don't like you, right? Yeah. Like, this is me trying to give you as much of the olive branch as possible. While this is going on, you see in kind of a, a short distance away, Scott joking around with Havoc, which is great that they're fucking yeah. just back to, yeah, yeah, brothers are enjoying each other. But at the corner of his eye, he sees Emma. And Emma leans over and she sees Scott. What up, though? And for me, that was enough because... Okay, so here are the ramifications. If Scott is a clone of his former self and all of this... If this current run, X10, is the year and they still remember everything else, he would still remember a past relationship with Emma Frost. Mm-hmm. No? Mm-hmm. So that's still embedded. I don't think... If he would remember, but he's he's not... They He doesn't remember everything that happened in... in past life so they may have never actually met yet but they're I, destined to you know I, what I, mean? don't, I don't i don't there's there's something i there's i think there. based on the the way it was the only the one that art, remembers the art, everything would be moira the only one from or, all the lives or charles no but she only remembers her life she doesn't remember everybody else's life right but it doesn't matter they don't remember their own lives but uh, i'm saying that whatever x-men run was before this like before they got to this point yeah they were already hooked up. Like, there's a team where they're on the same... Th- there's a moment in time where Jean's gone from the picture, and it's Emma and Scott, and the they thing. had yeah, a relationship. You can assume that, yeah. So, we're not exactly sure, but yeah, you can assume Because the, there's they, no dates given. They don't They don't fill in the blanks of what's happened previous, other than one panel of, like, oh, okay, Wait, there's a what, life lived. And what throws me, too, is that Jean's in, like, her Marvel girl yeah, uniform. So she there's, no, to, there's no date. You don't know when, when this takes place. Happened, you don't know. And it's a weird-looking beast, too. Yeah. Like, he's a... Yeah. It's just everything's a little bit out of time. Skewed. Yeah. But that's what I like. So I... Keeps, I, you, it keeps, you, th- keeps you thinking. For my Easter egg, I was like, if there's anyone that's going to fuck up shit, it's Emma Frost, because she wants to fuck up shit. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, and then there's little, like, panels of just mutants getting together, essentially just hooking up. It turns. It looks like it's turning into a big orgy. But we move on to the next. <laughs> oh yeah, Powers of Ten, number six. House of X. The final issue. House of X. So it's a retread of the fair with Moira and Charles. Yeah, you get everything you got from the first. Plus issue. a bit more yeah. about how he reacts to learning that they always lose, and she's kind of like, "Oh, Charles," he's like, "You, 
you know, you never change and you, whatever. You're always, you're always so good. And he's like, thank you. She's like, it's not a compliment. <laughs> like I need to fucking basically, I need to brand. Break, I need your, to break you. Yeah. Break your resolve because this is not good. Yeah, you need to fuck shit up now. Yeah. Which is really cool. Cause he's like, Pardon well, me. <laughs> he, he's been, he's been the Boy Scout. Madeline. So yeah. why you hate Scott Summers for being a Boy Scout? He only got it from his father figure. Yep, that's fair. Before he before we can get to like I don't know if we're gonna talk about X Men, the first issue because you get some you get some. We'll great, see. Well, we got some other stuff to do too. But his first father figure, or the one they latch on to, was Professor Arx. So everything yep. that he instilled came from him. Yeah. Where when people try to compare it to Wolverine, Wolverine has just been kind of a not a violent animal, but a man who has been prodded and poked and forced to like adapt. That he never got to be a Boy Scout. He always had to be yeah. guard up and then fuck it. I'm gonna kill everybody else. When Scott's like, "Hey man, you're you're peaceful here. Just wear these glasses, learn some shit. I'll take care of you, and then follow my peaceful mission. Po- follow my my set." So the fact that because of Mora, his outlook changed. Everyone else's outlook changed, would have changed as well. So, expect Beast to have stronger teeth. Expect Storm to have stronger teeth. Yeah. Expect Gene to have stronger teeth, because their leader, their father figure, is more militant or more. I don't give a fuck. It's us. Radicalized, it's, almost. It's yeah, not almost. Not quite, but yeah, he, he, he is. No, they are really Uh That jumps to uh, year. Is there anything else we need to talk about? This. Uh, That's no. About it. No. J- jumps to year so basically Charles is on board right. jumps to year uh, 10 sorry 1000 1000 years later is it 10? yeah no okay. it's 1000 library meets with Moira okay. and Logan in the mutant so that mutant dome from way back in the first powers of 10 right we find out that there are mutants housed in there and two of them there's a bunch of weirdos and uh, two of them <laughs> well, they're all are weirdos. Moira and Wolverine so now they've lived a thousand, a thousand years. years past this now Wolverine's like a little gray it makes sense he's got the healing factor Moira's still there. There is a throwaway line of that they share the same blood. Mm-hmm. So there's some sort of transfusion going transfusion transfusion going there. So Fus- that's how she's fusion. Fusion. What did I say? Fusion? Fus- I'm an idiot. Um so transfusion. She, she's basically it can be as, assumed that she's got his healing factor right now, which yep. is why she's able to live so long. And you could even uh, assume that maybe Sinister had some sort of undertaking possibly, in that? Yeah. Possibly. Possibly. The librarian that visits them is basically... This is kind of where all the failing stuff comes to a head. And he's tempting or teasing them or taunting her to talk him out of being assimilated into the higher... The hive. You know, yeah, the hive mind. He, he talks that the machines actually aren't the real villain for the mutants. It's actually the humans. humans yeah. And what they've done now is they've named themselves, like we've talked about before, half machine into a new... Uh, version of that version of itself it's, not, it's, it's a new there's homo sapien homo superior and then homo nisimo or whatever and that's what they are now and that's just they've designed that just to be assimilated into the phalanx to live forever right now he wants he's kind of daring her to talk him out of doing it so that her legacy can live on right because he knows about her jumping timelines yep yeah. and he goes if I kill you now you'll never Reach it, potential. Reach it, but yeah. if I let you escape, then there's a chance that you could go back and stop this, right? Or try to. Right. It's fun to think about you trying to. Right? <laughs> so he's kind of like, Wolverine ends up killing him. This is, I think we only reference, this is the third time it happens, but we only reference it twice. I think so. But, so, and then she turns around, she goes, I've learned what I need from him. You so, me, yeah. take me. Take me. Yeah. So he kills her, and, and that it, ends her sixth life. And so the sixth life that they, was blanked, they filled in. It's actually the the thousand years later was her sixth life. And that was a, it's a great, cool. it's a great silhouette of just fucking snit of oh, awesome Wolverine's picture, claws yeah. in Moira yeah. and she kills him again. And it's like, it's like, it's like stars too. Like it's a, yeah. it's a weird, it's weirdly composed, but so amazing in silhouette. But it's cool knowing that that was her sixth, sixth life, life and that's why it was blacked out because she, this is she, had she, a, she learned had a, she that had a, man is the problem, not machine. But she hadn't lived that life yet. So that's why you couldn't reveal it. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's such it was a, a plot. It was a, a little weird, twist, right? weird, but that goes back to your whole theory that maybe she creates an Imran to, cre- to maybe. kill humans. Maybe. It's possible. And then it goes back to uh, X to the power of 10. Right. Where Moira is talking with X the boys. Yep. 
And that's where you kind of you you come to realize that precogs aren't allowed on Krakoa whatsoever because they may discover Moira and they may discover the truth, which is mutants always lose. Yeah. Every life that she has lived, they, they, lose. Always, they always lose. They're destined to lose, even though they've built a nation on winning and being the next um, step of evolution. They've told everybody that they're going to win. She knows they lose every single time. Now, Charles agrees to everything that she's saying, even though she's promised Raven Mystique the fact that she would this bring is, back Destiny this is where they're, as, they're, as a seat for on the council. This is where the dude's ego is getting in the way of her plans. She's like, we promised Mystique that we could bring Destiny back. She's like, you can't. He's like, we know. Because if you do that, you know, da, da, da. he's like, we Yeah, know. well, you know. Like, they're so eager. And then it's like, you they're, guys are... They're so nonchalant about, yeah, this no, is no. going to fuck somebody up really soon. She's lived this... Mystique doesn't really play around, times, especially yeah. if you make a deal with it. Um, but the, the, the... So you can already see some seeds of undoing, though. That they're they're kind of stepping out of their line to do their own thing. But here's the ramification. Those three know that they're going to lose this life. Not this one. They're hoping they don't, but they... They understand that there is a chance they don't, but they don't every, want to let every life, else? every life past before this has been a loss. That, for know, me, that's the know. weirdest cop out because yeah. you can explain to Destiny, "Hey, man, we lost these," or but Destiny would just tell you, "Like this, this is not going to be the one you're going to win, or this is the one you're going to be win, or that you know Moira's in hiding." And she knows that we always lose, and some will, that'll it'll start or it'll start an upheaval. Who, society, but who, right? who is she hiding from? Like who can't know that Moira is there? Anybody? She doesn't want any. Like, okay, so Why? at the end of the book, that goes into her journals, and yes. there's there's these different entries, and that kind of gives some backstory to that. So uh, yeah, are we jumping in? We're we're, we're doing we're journals. Let's do the journals. Okay. Because this is still part of the story, right? This is part of twelve. Yeah. So is this? Okay. Uh, her journal entries kind of just cover what she talks about with Xavier or about Xavier and she redacted some of her journals yeah there's hilarious. a couple that are redacted so entry 5 I won't read the whole thing but it's just about her meeting Xavier the first time and kind of bending the truth to what she wants mm-hmm. so unlike myself observation is not granted in perfect re- so unlike myself observation is not granted in perfect recall of my past lives and as I will not permit him to read me a second time he is now dependent on my interpre- interpretation of past life events so right there, not everything she's telling him is perfect truth. She's kind of molding it to... What you need to know so we can yeah. get shit moving forward. It's painful how hopeful and idealistic he remains. It's shameful how much he wants to love these people. He will learn. So it's like she's destined to break him, right? Uh, entry 12 is redacted. Entry 14 escapes to... Fuck. Xavier's such like a broken Pawn. puppy dog, though. Yeah. But like he... like That's why it's all about her. It's all those like battered syndromes or like when you hear that like owners hit their dogs and the dogs keep going back to them. Yeah. Like he's such a, a dog that gets beat. I was like, well, love me. It's like, not these guys. Like while we have become romantic, it is becoming clear to me that I have I am breaking Charles Xavier. And if I do not... If I do break him, how will he become the man I need for him to be the coming days? So at least, there's a point here where it's kind of like she, she, there's a, there is a point where she'll push him too far. Now, when, and maybe when, that's a tease to Onslaught. Maybe it's evil Exan, uh, Xavier, some sort of cerebral headed Charles. Was she know? sexing, um, cerebral head Charles no, with a thick body? Before. This was wheelchair. This is, this is cerebral? real. Yeah. So his dick worked when he was a wheelchair. Yeah. Well, this is fact. Yeah. Sure. Than the journal. Yeah. His my dick concern, size was this big. My concern. <laughs> just a picture of a penis. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> My concern, my paramount fear is, oh, that, he's not circumcised. is that I fracture his psyche and eventually unleash something unexpected on the world. That's where I kind of, is that like, like some sort of onslaught type of thing? I don't you, know. Oh yeah, because they get to rewrite it? Yeah. I hope it's Latveria. Entry 17. Ooh. Entry 17 is interesting because they talk about, um, he has the most, like, where is it? Uh, he has the most powerful idea regarding the potential tandem of several mutants and what they could accomplish if they worked in harmony to the five, right? Mm-hmm. The only thing we lack is a mutant with the ability to tweak primal matter or give reality as we know it a push. I have used my expertise in genetic modification to find potential matches for both Charles and me to produce such a mutant. That's fucked up. Yep. Because that means her and Kyle McTaggart, or Joseph McTaggart rather, to to create Kyle McTaggart Proteus Mm -hmm. was planned. Um, Charles and Gabrielle Haller to create Legion was planned. planned. That's fucked up. But why didn't... Why didn't Charles and Mora have a kid? Because their their genetic gigs? their genetic doesn't, mix doesn't wouldn't, want, wouldn't create what they're looking for. Yeah, yet hers these are the two that, that would have. That is fucked right up. And and those two are some of the dangerous. They're the most powerful mutants around. 
Well, yeah. hey, we didn't even talk right. about the they Hickman also gives us a Omega oh, list. Oh, list of Omega list. Yeah, she does. Um, that Franklin's on, which gave me a whole like, oh, I can't wait till Franklin makes his way into this universe. Well, he's, Franklin's fucked because he creates galaxies. Mm-hmm. Dude's the most powerful mutant, I think, ever. But he would definitely need to be a part of whatever her concoction is if she's trying to win this war against. You think so? You think so? Right? How? How can't he? How they can have he a. Not be, how, how is? Um, our twenty them boys. <laughs> Her, and then number 22, the entry number two is about Magneto. I had and sex with him too. No, no, it but she, better. she learns, she's just talking about how <laughs> one position thing of note, I have successfully imprinted the idea of stronghold in his mind. Of course, it has always been there, but seeing so many lives as an island. So he, he, she's kind of just alluding to making things stronger. He always, wanted, he always he wants, wants HQ, him. he wants a base, he wants, so he I just wanted a lab area, him. yeah. Boom, he's, he's exactly. on, he's on board. Well, he had Genosha for one uh, moment in time, and then he had, uh, uh, then there's an he's entry, a teacher in the en- entry twenty. Yeah, Xavier Institute. He's yeah. always had a base of operation, but never. There's a, another a entry twenty nine about apocalypse. He's made himself known to the world, knowing him the way I do, because in a past life she joined him, right? Right. And having aligned myself already with Xavier, my native recruitment will not be an option until much later date. So they're basically just like they're just monitoring him and making sure he doesn't bring any Omega mutants into his his horsemen. <laughs> Which could happen <laughs> yeah. and probably will happen. That's all they're doing. Like, we'll get to him, but just make sure he doesn't... Hey, Iceman, what are you doing? Make sure he doesn't fuck things. <laughs> yeah. Entry 35 about Xavier is also redacted. But he does. Doesn't North uh, Omega? That's, that's way... But she doesn't know. She would know that. She's lived that long. Yeah, but they're they're, tar- they're worrying about... This is more right like now. X sure. to 10. This is more sure. like X to 10. Because uh, if if they change that that year hundred and thousands don't even happen. Yeah, that's, that's also true. Um, I have underestimated Xavier. Sorry, before you continue, because you just said something that makes amazing sense, right? Like anything tweaked now can change year hundred and year thousand. Yeah. We're looking at it as as it's it a constant, as it, it's, it's inevitable, and it's not even it's that. Not. So no. But we needed to know about her. Year one thousand was another life completely. But life. we needed to know about that life that may not happen. I'm wondering if there's a way that Mora can get lives back if those maybe, never but fully... those those lives. Remember, in all those lives, or in majority of those lives, she learned something new, right? right. And in life six, she learned about humans. In life, look, nine, she's been she, trying to figure out cheat she codes. Where... She's been figuring out cheat codes from life four. Yeah. So yeah. I'm pretty sure she's on her way to be like. Yeah. I can she's just speed running I, the game. Now. I can squeeze two more in, but keep watching uh, Apocalypse. Entry forty eight. This is what I'm talking about with their egos. This is this is the interesting one. Uh, I've underestimated Xavier's infatuation with the possibilities of what can be accomplished with mutant genetic material without my knowledge and against my advice, both Charles and Magneto traveled to Bar Sinister and recruited him to the cause. So she didn't even want Sinister around. No, but... And they're like, he's got a seat in the council. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So their ego, like this is before Krakoa has even started. Mm-hmm. It's just starting now. And they're like, but they had to put in the, they had to put the, the work. Because without Sinister, you wouldn't have got your X-Men back. Yeah, but she, like, it's sinister. So she's just like, you got to get air, that. You, air well, we we looked country. at the council. The council's half bad people, like yeah. half uh, original foes, which is amazing. Uh, Entry 52 is interesting about Magneto. We have lost Magneto. I had hoped, given the opportunity to help him make him better, man, instead, we all have made as an enemy. I'm just as bad as they are, if not worse. Now, we don't know, before you go into that, we don't know what year these entries are. We don't know no. what time. We don't know which Emma, sorry, this, well, which this is, Moira. This is Moira 10. As far as I can tell, so she's kind of going along as she goes. But this there's is, there's a jump from f- well forty eight to fifty two, right? So we can assume it's this. This sounds like it's a mutant genesis, right? Where Asteroid M blows up. Oh, okay, remember that run? Right. So that would be cool. If that if or that ha- event or House of M, con- maybe. But then they didn't. That was more of Scarlet Witch, right? Yeah, no, but this is daughter. Yeah, maybe. So, but yeah, there's some sort of we have and lost Magneto. He was king, like in that reality, yeah. he was like the yeah. the god. So we have, they lost him for a while. He comes back, but they're talking about the whole. Genesis what could have been? Run. Yeah, what could have been the follow? Entry fifty seven by Xavier, and they're just talking about how we will fake my. Oh, this is where they fake her death, or return to the shadows where I belong. Hmm. So she feels that she has she's removing herself from the world because she's become a little too involved. And is messing things up. But she's up. the tinkerer. Like, she's the catalyst. How do you not get involved? Nobody knows. Nobody really knows she's a mutant either, right? So Other than Destiny. Yeah. Yeah. Who's, they're not bringing back. Yeah. Can't <laughs> do that. Okay. So my hypothetical question would be to you. Of the council members that we know exist, so no Red King. Yeah. Which do you feel would find Mora's diary? Because I don't know if it's Mystique. a... Nice. I was going to say either Mystique or... It's going to be... 
Mystique, M O R G, in my personal yeah. opinion. I think, no, be, I think it'd be Mystique. Because I don't know if it's a hard copy or if it's a digital. Are they going thing. looking for it? If they're going looking for it, it's Mystique. I, I don't know what type of journal it is. Because she's going right? to get. Is this an online? Is this a book? Is this. Because like, they're, they're stalling. They're stalling. I wrote it on a tree. They're stalling about the whole Destiny res- resurrection. She's not going to. She, eventually, she's going to be like, what the like, fuck where is, is going it? on? Yeah. But same with Emma. Emma's always looking for power and um, leverage. Correct, but she's she's pretty satisfied with what she has right now, except for Sebastian. So the... that bugs her, but she's got soul contribution. She's making money hand over fist. Is that so her motivation? I think so, and 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 security, like status security. Well, what what gives you more security than leverage over the people that have brought you? I just in? don't think she'll be good looking for. If she finds it, that's one uh, thing. Uh, 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 well, yeah. Did I say looking for or finds? I said we finds. were talking. Look, oh, finds. Yeah, she, if she stumbles on it, she'll definitely. Any of them it. can stumble on it. Yeah, but I mean, that's what I thought you meant when you said going looking for it's mystique. It's well, the motivation. Th- th- nobody would know what they're looking for. They don't know if no, but mystique, exists, mystique right? would go digging for the whole being stalled for so long. She'd be like, "The fuck is this? I'm gonna, you know, let me find some." I'm just well. Emma's a telepath, same with Jean. So they could just be walking and sent somebody's. Like thought process going off that shouldn't Charles, be around. Like, Charles and and Magneto, what would be the only ones that they could? She's because Moira's like buried underneath the. Sure, but unless she's got a like metal helmet on, you can't stop if the, her thoughts. Uh, I guess that's a bit of a reach, but yeah, it, Jean's uh, an Omega. <laughs> yeah, Jean, she's not looking for trouble. No, I'm just saying. Like, let's say she's in a pit of like whatever room you're in, and they're like it's. It's closed over, but she walks across, and Mara happens to be thinking something at that time. You're telling me Jean Grey can't sense somebody's thinking? I'm saying she wouldn't. Not that she can't. She doesn't care. She doesn't care. To, you have to look for them. You're not going to be like, oh, there's someone... You know, I, that's... She could. Sure. I don't think she wants to. This is a hypothetical. <laughs> are, you going to, are you going over the Omega Wait, list? Do you want to do that? I do. I want to go. We're going along that. here. Uh... We're not going long. We're, I told you it was going to be a huge one, man. Omega, she said. Omega level mutant. Are you talking about Moira when she saw Charles uh, and then it was like, oh, it wasn't really as big as I thought, Charles. And you're not circumcised. So he gives the definition of Omega. Whoa. <laughs> I said that earlier. You don't listen to nobody. Omega level mutant. He gives it, uh, whose dominant power is deemed to register or reach an undefinable upper limit of that power specific classification. This is kind of a cool. Little thing because caveat because they yeah. didn't they didn't specify what to you're the Omega most powerful meant. ever no no yeah. you're the most powerful in, in your, your field. industry yeah yeah that's sick I was like okay that makes sense because uh, for example both Magneto and Forge are the most powerful mutants of their power types on the planet Earth magnetism and te- techno- Slow technopathy down. slow down respectively but what makes Magneto and not Forge an Omega level mutant is that the upper limit of Forge's measurable powers could hypothetically be surpassed correct right. While the upper limit of Magneto's power cannot be surpassed. No, no one can go higher magnet than Magneto. So, for example, while Jean Grey is both a telepath and a telekinetic, she's only an Omega level telepath. Yep. Dope. Makes perfect sense. Dope. Thank you for clarifying that, Jonathan, because now we know. People need to hear. And they go through the list. Jamie Braddock, Braddock uh, who's the sister, or the, the brother of Betsy and Brian. Captain Britain. Mar- Captain Britain and Marvel. And, and <laughs> <laughs> Captain Marvel. I am drunk. Captain Britain uh, and Red Bull and Sonic. Coke. His reality manipulation, so the qu- his Omega powers would be quantum. Your boy. Yeah, Bobby Bo- Bobby Bands. Robert Drake, Iceman. Temperature manipulation. Alliance 2, Krokoa. Joshua Foley, Elixir. So one of the five. Mm-hmm. Biokinesis. Alliance 2, Krokoa. Jean Grey, Marvel Girl, Telepathy. Legion to Krokoa. You don't want to be Marvel woman now? This is my, my boy here, David Halley, Legion power manifestation is missing so we don't know he's not in this run yet yet uh eric lenshire magneto magnetism lines to krakoa is, is magnus now not um I canon? His nickname i guess magnus. kevin mctaggart proteus reality manipulation psionic lines to krakoa absalon mercator mr m matter manipulation alliance unknown aurora monroe there you storm. go storm weather manipulation mother, mother lady Alliance to Krakoa, Benet du Paris, Exodus. So on the council now, telekinesis. Alliance so he can make to, fires? There's alliance to none. But he's yeah, part he's of part an of alliance. Krakoa, <laughs> yeah, he's part of the council. So You got to work on that there, yeah. Chuck. Quentin Quire or Kid Omega, uh, Omega Powers Telepathy, Kid Alliance Omega's, to Krakoa. Kid the best. See, we haven't seen him either, but it's good to know that he's, he's part there, of He's there, yeah. Franklin Richards, Powerhouse, Reality Manipulation, Universal. Is that his alias, Powerhouse? Yeah, I didn't I'm, know that either. I don't know. Alliance to human. 
That one was highlighted too in the book. Yeah. It's like, bro, he doesn't know yet. You're playing for the wrong team. He doesn't know. Gabriel mm-hmm. Summers Vulcan energy manipulation alliance to Kakoa and Hope Summers power manipulation one alliance of the five. to Kakoa. One of the five. So, so my three of the five are right here. One of cool. my follow up question. Now that we know that Mora is making sure that Apocalypse never gets a hold of any of them, which do you feel would follow or fall in suit with uh, the Horsemen of Apocalypse? Which do you think he would get to turn over? Like easily or just would want to? Well, you can give me a want of who you'd love to see aligned with and who do you feel based on what we know about what we've I think Kid Omega would join up. Yeah. Quentin Quire is a little bit of a prick. At least he used to be when I used to read about him. So So would Legion because he's missing and unknown. Legion's a little different though. He's more got a head and a shoulder. Kid Omega, like he's a a little mischievous. Like he likes to play with fire. I can see him joining. I'd love to see Iceman there. I'd love to see just for the... The mm-hmm. optics, how cool it would be. I'd love to see Iceman. I'd love to see uh, Storm. I'd love to see... Jean Grey. I'd like to see Proteus. Yeah, this would be sick. Franklin would just get messy. <laughs> that would get real messy. That would be the best one, though. Yeah, that would be... Oof. If, if Apocalypse was the reason or responsible for bringing Franklin to Krakoa, but then you find out, like, no, he's he's mine. He's a horseman. And then the ramifications with Fantastic Four and that, that's a great arc right there. Now, uh, yeah, that'd be sick. That'd be sick. There are some sinister secrets that are part of uh, one of the issues, too. We save them for last because they're kind of cool. And we're still trying to figure out all the secrets? So yeah. If you yeah. know, um, hit us up at Patreon. <laughs> Mac Weldon. <laughs> Or uh, Twitter. I think we have a Twitter. We don't. Yeah. Have, we don't have anything. Um, no, oh Twitter. no! You can leave a comment. Okay. Leave a leave a like. Oh, that'd be awesome. But we have Twitter. Do we? Yeah. Co- at comic underscore patrol. Hey, what do you know? <laughs> I should be using this one. We don't use it too often. But co- at comic underscore patrol. <laughs> this is the first time we're starting. It's a new run. Yeah. New fifty two. So yeah. Sinister secret number one. Hashtag sinister secrets. So we want He's to trying to pretend that no one noticed he was wearing red shoes. But this truly sinister sinister isn't fooling anyone. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. This is weird. But the only thing that stands out is the red shoes. I was kind of browsing. Who wears red shoes? Wizard of Oz. Some sort of deal with walking down, like jumping Yellow Bibber? times. I don't know. That's what you... It couldn't just be as funny as, like, one of the Sinister clones, like, wears red shoes? It could easily be that. It could easily be that. Fucked if I know. That's all, <laughs> that's all I wrote. You also wrote that, yes. Sinister Secret number two. And speaking of fashion, the Whisper Network has turned into a roar regarding the return of this trend-setting mutant who was cut down in his prime. Will someone please tell all these mutants to stop wearing human clothes and join the stampede across their island full of flowers to the flower that's the fullest? Uh, this one you can surmise about Jumbo Carnation, who was from uh, Grant Morrison's run. Okay. Uh, the new X Men in one thirty four. He was a mutant fashion designer, mm-hmm. and he was he died from an overdose of kick. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. But he and he was only around for a little while. Sister Secret number three. So so that was you could surmise that he's revived with them. So there could be some sort of. New fashion going around. Cool. Oh, like Sister Secret number three. Years ago, a deceased redheaded pretender made a pact with the devil. When she passed on, most believe that any secret she had went with her to the grave. Won't everyone be surprised when they find out not only is this not true, but she left behind a whole lot more than secrets. Madeline Pryor. Right. Redheaded pretender. Madeline Pryor. Jean Grey clone. Um, is she not dead? She is dead. Mm-hmm. But... The, the thing that that's, that's crazy here is when they find out that she left behind a whole lot more than secrets. Maybe a kid? Maybe Jean Grey? Maybe fucking some Nate, Nate Nathaniel Grey version or something. Strife? We can get Strife? Yeah, some, sort of, some sort of weird thing, right? Strife should fuck shit up. Sister Secret number four. While every Sinister has been busy wondering how they might be affected by current events, almost no one noticed what washed ashore. A word of advice to all things sinister, don't embrace the revelry or there won't be anything for you to celebrate. No idea what he was talking about at first, at first glance. Well, wash your shore. <sighs> you, well, you, shores of the island. You can talk about maybe time misplaced mutants. Maybe somebody from 
the other timelines that we've been introduced to, like the Rasputins and stuff like that. Maybe sure. they wash the shore. I don't know how that's possible. Or it's there as simple is... as maybe don't join up with this island that you don't know that much about. Yeah. There is one thing that came across from a different uh, uh, Hickman run when he's when he wrote uh, Secret Wars and then he had Battle World. Captain Marvel washed upon sh- Battle World shore at Bar Sinister. Okay. Oh. And she kind of got manipulated by him. Nice. That was the first appearance of Bar Sinister, was in that battle world, and she literally washed up on shore. So, and, I don't know. Maybe and to this point, done. Sinister still doesn't know that he had a conversation with Charles about doing all the genetic research for all these mutants? It's implied that. So It's implied that. I'm going to get to... That actually, that's a good thing you brought that up, because there's... That's another dirty secret, too. There's a Sinister secret revealed that he got his power from Dr- John Proudstar. Thunderbird. Thunderbird. Hey. It's kind of cool. It only lasted, like, two issues, but... <laughs> That's where this the mutated Sinister got his powers from. Are we going to get Thunderbird or back? or Maybe. Maybe. He's definitely not working. Sinister Street at number five. He's the best there is at what he does. Wolverine. She's married with a kid. The husband knows exactly what's going on, but who is he to point the finger? He's up to much the same and more. Maybe this is just the new normal on the mutant island. Gene and Cyclops? That's what I'm thinking. Wolverine, Gene, Cyclops, Emma. Ew. Well, She's he... married with a kid, though. That's the weird thing. Yeah, the kid is Nathan. Who's the kid? Well, there's Nathan and Rachel, but they're not like conventional kids, right? They're other dimensional kids or other reality kids. Well, that's Moira. Could be Moira, exactly. Maybe Moira is. Why do Why do you feel Wolverine's the best? That's what that's the they always see. He's the best. That's, what he does. Does. that's okay. his tag. It's that has to do with him. So that's where it was connected. Then. Yeah. Does uh uh Orojo have any kids with uh so. T'Challa? No, no, not with T'Challa. So this is secret number six. Everyone believed that the plan of this progerium mutant with secret sinister ties was foiled, but little did the gifted ones know that the destroyed samples were switched out beforehand. I didn't know what this was about. I'd look this up a bit. There's actually a run of Spider-Man and the X-Men where this character named Ernst gives sinister X-Mansion like peoples mm-hmm. from the X-Mansion DNA in exchange for her friends. She has a friend who's a brain. And she wants a body. Okay. She was progerian mutant, basically like Benjamin Button. She looked, she was young, but looked really old. Um, and in this in this this series, it's only it was a limited series. The DNA samples are shattered and broken. Right. And it's right here saying, but little did the gift ones know that the destroyed samples were switched out beforehand, so he kept them. Hmm. Right. Sinister secret number seven: Two brothers jumped out of a plane, and for the longest time until. He was discovered. Many wondered if there was a third. If he, if we told you there were more, would you believe me? Probably not. Vulcan. Yeah. So we, well, that's the thing. Vulcan would be the third, right? Right. So this is in, implying that maybe there's, there's another, more summers. There's another brothers. summers. That's yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. The da- the dad's a fucking galaxy ride in, yeah. just jet yeah. flying. And there was a line. There was a storyline. Rolling pre- Stone. Yeah. There's a storyline back in like the eighties or nineties where it was implied that maybe Gambit was a brother. Maybe no, Adam, I don't want that. Adam X the Extreme was supposed to be a brother, and then they ended up being Vulcan. I always so. thought X Man was going to be. A song I don't want Gambit either, but it's just, that was implied. X Man, you remember X Man? No, no, no X Man. Yeah, X Man. There's an X Man. <laughs> Uh, since this is your number eight, for years the fittest of all mutants had routinely surrounded himself with particularly numbered entourage. So like Apocalypse, the four horsemen. Mm-hmm. These hangers on these hangers on stick around for a while until they are eventually replaced with newer, more exciting members. What most people don't know is if that the original members returned, these pretenders would be dropped so fast their heads would spin. Nate Gray is the X Man. Oh, I didn't know what was his name. Fuck me. Oh, it's like the teen one. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's the okay. That's why I didn't know. I didn't read that. Basically just talking about the orgy, like the orgy? The orgy. <laughs> the OG horsemen right. are his favorites. Since the secret number nine, these say they say the kids are all right, but all of course is not. they were first. Yeah. And they're locked away with Araco or the other half of Krakoa. Right. They say the kids are all ah. right. So they might come back. Yeah. They say the kids are all right, but all right all is not right in paradise. I want to know what your opinion is, because you might they they say the kids are all right, but all is not right in paradise. This non couple couple has been apart so long. Friends are expecting they that when they see each other again, fireworks are going to ensue. Is the universe ready? Judging by how unprepared everyone was for what's happened so far, we kind of doubt it. Who the fuck are they talking about? Kitty Pride Colossus. Interesting. 
Because everybody it leads, you think it would be talking about Moira and Xavier, right? The non-couple couple. But then all this stuff is like, they've been together. I don't, like, it's, it's not like they've been reunited. She's there at the island, right? Yeah, they don't know that. No, they don't. Rogue Gambit? I don't know. Fireworks Jubilee? I don't know. Yeah, that's the only thing I made. Who did Dazzler Mac on? I don't know. Jubilee and that, remember that guy Sink? He was the dude who copy powers? Yeah. Meh. They were, I don't know. So this is a weird one. Uh, there's a sensor secret revealed about Inferno. And then the secret number 10. Which brainwashed mutant sinister was replaced long before a certain bald somebody knew and has been in the... Has, sorry, let me try that again. Which brainwashed mutant sinister was replaced long before a certain bald somebody knew and has been in on the game for almost as long as the game was being played? Nice. Shh. Remember you just asked? So he kind of knows what's been going on? I don't think he's been fully mind wiped. I think he remembers. And there's some sort of sinister clone that knows all this stuff. And knows that Charles and, Exa- and Magneto asked him to take DNA samples. And maybe he's figuring something out on the own. So you asked, who's going to find the journal? Sinister could. He Fair could. enough. But to Hickman's credit, Sinister's already been making mega clones. Oh, yeah. And yeah, and one of them... Chimeras. <laughs> Chimeras, yeah. Chimera. Uh, anything else? There's, there's, there's more Easter eggs. They've, they've there's tons of eggs. Hickman made oh. a whole language. Like there's a whole alphabet, yeah. and there's yeah. codes to each at the end of each book. That if you take the codex, you can find out what the message is. We literally we didn't have enough time to all the stuff that we were already doing. Like I'd love to go back and do that. There but, is, but geez, we've already <laughs> how much? There is one thing I want to talk about before we go dive into. Do you find I? I kind of think there's something interesting about Wolverine and Moira's relationship. Okay. They seem closer than... Yeah, definitely. Than and, implied. Yeah. So he's the only one that we like talked about before had spoken up against inviting, like actually taking a step. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, what? We, he's the one who always kills her. I kind of feel like maybe he knows everything. Did you, did you say at one point there was a blood transfusion between the two? Yeah. So wouldn't he necessarily get some of his powers and she would get some of his, hers yeah but that was in year uh that was in the year one the 1000th year sure so but she remembers her 1000th year right so, so like, she wouldn't keep her power she just remembers it but time's not linear in this new universe no. it kind of ebbs and flows so who's to say that wolverine can't flash forward and remember a time that hasn't come like who's to say that he's not a destiny himself and doesn't have premonition, mm-hmm. especially if blood's transfused, right? Or if Sinister has his DNA and made a, a Destiny car. Like, we don't even know what type of copies are out there. So, no. he, Sinister could have made a Destiny Mora or a Destiny Wolverine. Like, yeah. And that can exist. I guess, yeah, you're right. And he's got a yeah. weird son. Who doesn't know? Like, Legion can go through time now? What's his Omega level? Oh, yeah, he's, yeah, he. He does everything. David Haller, he's. <laughs> <laughs> so, not Legion. Legion is a. Uh, you think da- I'm Proteus? Da- uh, no, I'm thinking Dakin. Oh, Dakin. No, son. yeah, yeah no, it's, a Wolverine it's for, son. Okay, it's going for a legitimate. Uh, His actual son. Bloodlines. Yeah, no. So I kind of just got the feeling that I think Wolverine is kind of like Moira's secret agent. Like I think he knows everything, mm-hmm. and she's he's kind of like the contingency. Like if things start to go out of hand, you have to take down Chuck. Yeah, I need you to do this. Well. That's kind of what I got. Because they're you together said, a lot. You said earlier that it may not even be Chuck under the fucking helmet. And that it may shit not be. threw me for a fucking loop. Yeah. yeah, I was like, damn. It may not be. Because you he, never see his face. Well, he's already broken the moral code, right? Like, we've seen how many movies. And, like, you've read him of comic books where yep. Chuck always talks about, like, I'm the, one of the strongest mutants ever. He's not listed as a Omega, by the way. No, he's not. Um, but I need to so, He's not Omega. Well, maybe this version of it is Technically, Marvel goes more. Anyways, yeah, yes, go for his thing. But yeah. like, I'm for sure. anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but he seems so casual with the moral ramifications of everything that he's doing. He's literally playing God on so many different levels, with so many different lives and personal stakes that to pull a pin, the entire thing would fall. Yeah. You just need one person to be like, no, don't bring me back. Like, if I die and you still bring me back, like, fuck you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> don't. Like, you have to die at some point. Or, like, you have to let go at some point. And 
Typically, this is what happens with power. Sooner or later, it corrupts. Maybe, Absolute power corrupts all, right? Maybe there's a reason that Magneto always needed Charles at the opposite ends of the spectrum because he, they each would have inflated each other too high and would have. Oh, this is a house of cards. This is a house of cards. It's gonna come falling down. But at now some they're point. so on the same end that who's counterbalancing? What there? There isn't a counter, right? Well, th- that that's why I love the council because I do believe that Emma. Arroyo, Jean, and Kurt would kind of be on the opposite end of the spectrum because yeah. they still, with some regards to Frost, because I never know if she's fully evil or fully good. Yeah, I don't, she's a wild card, which I love. Yeah, but I they would they would be the ones to be like, Nah, man, you've gone too far. When everyone else is like, You haven't gone far enough, or I don't care what you do, yeah. I'm doing what I need to yeah. do. Yeah, that's, that's that's the whole other that's the whole seat right there with Sinister and Yeah, <laughs> I don't like, care what the fuck you do. Like. Are we going to kill him or not? Like, the whole um, Sabretooth thing was hilarious because he was just screaming out things like, I don't care about you. And then they just lobotomize him, too. Yep. So their power is absolute as well. Like, yep. sooner or later, like, you can't do this. Someone's going to be like, you can't do this. Or, or I'm just waiting for the Avengers to be like, you can't do this. Or I'm waiting for Fantastic Four to be like, you can't do this. It'll be interesting to see how, how the, the rest other, of the universe yeah, reacts to all Because sooner or later, someone wants to visit there and can a non-birth mute... So they can let people in, right? Like, yep. So, for example, in in uh, they can bring people into Krakor with them because Magneto brought in the statesman from the UN, the Braddocks, right? So, right. so Betsy's allowed in because she's a mutant. Brian's not a mutant, but you can get but escorted if she in. She says, "Like you can get okay, escorted, yeah, yeah, you can, you can get come escorted in." in right? like the ambassadors came in and they were touring, right? So they can come in. What I just said before yeah. you want to give me your whole Braddocks spiel, you son of a bitch. My question is. How soon before the Fantastic Four or the Avengers get invited in? Well, they'll, they'll show up. They'll show up. They'll show up. But who's to say they're going to let them in? You can knock at the door, but if I don't want to see, oh no, you, they'll, they'll be invited. I think. I think at some point they're 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 cool. Like to what extent? Exactly. They're not all coming in. It's more like okay, Cap, if you want to come in, you can check this out. We'll see how it operates. If you want to check it out, but you're not. Or they may just say no. Fuck off. No. We'll meet you outside. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. The Dawn of X is here, so we'll see. I th- for me, this would have been a great way to wrap up X Men, like to just I know. Well, they end it. it. Kind of did, and now it's leading into a new direction. No, but I mean, like to be like, okay, we're gonna shelve it now. Like this is the utopia oh, that we've worked for. Like, yeah. Just put it on the shelf. Cause That's you, not a bad idea, but because you've done so much like groundwork to erase everything that wasn't working, and just to give reverence to what did and then just give a peaceful kind of ending to like oppositions that like you you brought your foes in that were your foes for so long to be like no we can be in peace here wrap it up and then you just have a little trickle years down the line comics don't work like this because everyone (laughs) wants everything now fair enough hickman you'd be surprised You'd be surprised. I, I, is... I'm not I'm not against the whatever the long con is, because I'm sure he's like, I no one's paying attention to this character over here. But like just to 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 hear like this is how X-Men ended. And then you're like, Well, these are this is X Factor now. Well you know how it is nowadays. I would have loved this. Back... I would love this as the ending all and to end all. Yeah, well you know how it is. As soon as a new writer comes on, they'll change everything again. But it's not like the days of old where new writers would come on and take over for the old writer. Yeah. It's now like new writer comes on, they restart so, everything. Sometimes that works. It used to work all the time, but now it's now it's like I'm here. I'm gonna restart everything. It's like new issue one. But anyways, this is this will be Hickman's baby for the next probably two years, like our time, and we'll see it, how it goes. If you're not already amped I'm about super, everything I'm, about everything you read, uh, clearly I'm not talking to you because we spent yeah no nope, almost just, three hours talking about this, and we literally can we talk about more. Like we're 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 trying to wrap I got it more up. Notes, but we're so do I, and I have more like stop. theories, but we have to stop. Th- I think it's our long, longest one. It's our new fifty two by almost an hour. Um, we're gonna we were gonna give you a whole new rating system for um read or not read, but if you can't tell in hour two, this is a not to read this read this shit, man. Yeah, we're giving up. We're giving it up. This a this a, no no. Let me say that. We're, this is a love letter to X Men. This is a love letter to X Men fans. This is a love letter to continuity. This is a love letter. to comic books and this is um a great exercise of what you think is coming next because we already started reading what comes next and yeah. we're all like no i didn't even see that coming we should do a don vex sequel we probably will we're yeah. doing more uh, if 
you don't hear more Hickman stuff from us is because Hickman has personally uh, sent us, sent yeah. us yeah, a cease and desist. Yeah. But fuck, we love it. Goddamn. And we care. Um, now you can give it a boom. Boom. I give this I, a full boom. Give it a... Ooh. Yeah. There's the part I of the new scale. that out. That's <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares. 